Okay, there you go. <laughs> there. There we go. GG. I. Right. Ooh, thanks, guys. GG's internet and go, 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 Mog. Ooh. Thorn starting. He's going to be doing the counter stance strat. It's just a lot of counter stances. This is an older sub where you uh, upgrade cheapest weapon through the menu by upgrading a different one. GG internet on his time. Fell going into his bottom phase. The standings are exactly what I thought they'd be for this game. <laughs> Let's finish this. Drop the trace. Do you know what your time was at internet? Uh, 62808. And that should be GG. I'm watching. Don't know about you. Oh. 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 Some memes on Sephiroth today. Again. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, she's dead. That's time okay, for fine. Fall Winger. Yeah, Team right, Choco. Team Choco, go. Team Choco. Go, go, go. Final Fantasy V. Make it happen. Now we just got our last contestant, Goran. Our last hope for someone to do Sephiroth correctly. Come on, Goran. I'll probably have to retime the end of Internet's run. I think he PB'd. Yeah. He said 628, wouldn't that, that? That's a PB, isn't it, for you? you yeah, six, yeah, he had a yeah. 629 before. Yeah. Yeah, so we're getting some PBs Five today. About 56 seconds. I said that's good. That will get a 62659 or something like that. That's PB from two. Nice. And does Gorn PB here too? Yeah, yeah, Gorn should PB here. Can we get all three PBs? All three PBs? <laughs> really impressive. Yeah. And yeah, he gets lightning. Lightning is dangerous, but we're doing like a strat that just doesn't care. Yeah. With the HP ups, you don't have to worry. 2000 damage, whatever. Cloud does need to take the stagger, it's important. Berserk, our thrust, that's fine. Yep. Looks good. Nice. It should be oh. after the star uh -oh. star roll because he has off good. Oh, he a whiff. He should be fine though. Yeah. He should Eric. be fine, right? Oh. Um. Okay, everybody oh. got tossed around. This is kind of nah. He's fine. Yeah, yeah he's fine. GG. All right, there GG, goes. Gorn. There we go. GG. All right. GG. Everybody GG. Woo. God. Nice. Congratulations, GG. everybody. Nice. Yep. GG and go go go, Team Tonberry. Yep. Nice, uh, you know, quick sh and shout outs to everybody, the runners for being able to pull it off. No deaths, no game overs. They all did very, very well. Great job for everyone yeah, for the commentary. And that was really close, too. So that yeah. was really good. That was, was a really great good race. race. Yeah. Good race, yeah. everyone. And uh, if everyone. you want to see it, just a slight plug, if you want to see it uh, at a, the newest stuff and highest level, uh, <laughs> June 18th, I will be running in Quest of the Glory man. Marathon. <laughs> and I will show how to play the game, Boren. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll so, so we'll pass it on to. Uh, best is five minutes away from you now, so. The Ooh. Final Fantasy V crew and have them uh, explain their game and all that stuff. So yeah, thanks for having me, yeah, everyone. everyone. Uh, GG, thanks for everyone. everyone. Thank thanks you so much. Thank you. Thank you. GG, Great race, everyone. GG, 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 have fun. GG's. All right, hello. Welcome to FF5, and congratulations to the Final Fantasy VII Remake crew. Uh, great job. I think uh, I speak for all of us commentators that we certainly did not expect to uh, be joining you almost 60 hours into the relay, and, you know, we're starting pretty much within five minutes of each other. Uh, so we're 
in for a great race, but just before we get into uh, talking about FF5, I think we'll just introduce ourselves. So uh, my name is Toju. And I am Mythic Dawn. And since the dawn of man, humankind has wondered, what is the greatest Final Fantasy? And they have put forth many different pieces of evidence. But I tell you this, there is only one piece of evidence that matters. And it is a little piece of music called Battle on the Big Bridge. And what game is that in, you ask? It's in FF5. I am twirling Curtis. Good evening, gentlemen. Hard to top that one. <laughs> Curtis, that was incredible. Thank you. <laughs> incredible, just like FF5. Oh, yeah. FF5, uh, you know, we're joining this, like we said, everyone's close. And FF5 uh, definitely has sort of the foundations available to keep this relay close uh whether or not that happens you're gonna have to watch to find out but uh um especially the fact after it's come after ff4 and ff6 uh this game has a lot of differences compared to its snes counterparts and sure. uh the biggest one is something you're going to be seeing on uh mog's stream pretty much right away after he leaves this meteor is that unlike ff4 and ff6 uh ff5 has the same seed from new game every time so basically what that means is that all three of our runners are going to try to uh, maintain a step count all the way throughout the run. And, uh, you know, it's it's something that can definitely impact the final time, especially the first few hours. It's pretty critical to keep it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be losing some hefty time there. But uh, we'll see how far they can get. And obviously, ideally, we hope that they keep it to the end. Yeah, FF5 yeah, is absolutely. a pretty... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, absolutely. The step route is super integral to the run of FF5. There are a lot of encounters that we need at specific times, and the only way that we know that we're going to get those is with the step route. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> the the step yeah. route is one of the scarier parts of FF5. Yeah, absolutely. And, and FF5 is a pretty, I would call, like, snappy game. Like, the menus are very quick. It's relatively quick oh, yeah. to run away from encounters. If you need to, say they get off step count at some point and need to diverge, that that's still playable. But over the course of the game, depending on how early you get off step count, that can add to, like, large amounts of time uh, at the end of the game. Yeah, the biggest checkpoints we're really going to be looking at for step count happen roughly one hour into the run and then again uh at least for both mog and choco for the routes that they're doing about an hour and a half um we'll talk about that more when we get there but uh there are certain points of the run where um not having step count unless you get lucky can be a pretty large time loss yeah oh yeah it's about like uh about an hour in we'll get to a segment where encounters are basically impossible to run from um, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, yeah. For now, we just get some sort of intro fights with these goblins, as you can see on um, Team Mog stream. Uh, the whole day to win. Incredibly difficult. <laughs> yep. uh, we also rename Bart's to a single character, as it's a little bit faster. Um, in the Japanese version, Bart's does not actually start with a name, so it's a little bit faster to rename him there. Uh, Japanese will be a little bit faster in text, but only a, a handful of seconds, nothing too big. Um, yeah, that sort of uh, is a good segue into the uh, odd release history of this game. Um, <laughs> many people, when they were kids, uh, probably did not play this game if you grew up in the West, uh, because what we got was FF1 on the NES, FF2 on the SNES, and FF3 on the SNES. Um, as we grew older, uh, we learned that our FF2 and our FF3 were, in fact, not FF2 and FF3. They were FF4 and FF6, uh, both of which are runs that you saw already earlier in the marathon. So what happened to FF5? Well, for whatever reason, uh, FF5 was released uh, over in Japan on the Super Famicom, but uh, I believe we didn't get a release here uh, over in the West until the GBA port. So, actually, what you're seeing right now, uh, only Team Tomberry, Rupon, is running uh, an official version of the game. Uh, you're going to see Mog <laughs> and Choco running uh, an English translation patch. So, it is the same game, but, uh, uh, yeah, the, there technically isn't an official release of uh, FF5 for the Super Nintendo. 
Yeah, I think yeah, a lot of this... people played it first on the PlayStation uh, port. Oh, yes, the chat uh, is saying. So my, my mm -hmm, mistake, it was mm -hmm. the PlayStation oh, okay. no, version okay. came first. <laughs> I wasn't actually sure which one came first. All I know yes, is that that's neither. the one that I played <laughs> first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it's got some differences to it, too. Like, going back and playing the PS1 version, it's remarkably slow compared to the SNES version. All the battle loads. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it took years. Yeah. <laughs> Although it does just add a run button from the get go, so you technically don't have to like equip Thief if you want to go a decent speed. Yeah, that is that is one of the nice parts. Um also we, we recently saw FF four where the movement speed was kinda you know, a little bit slower throughout. Um this game, once we get access to the thief job, we'll act we'll be able to run. And so you combine that with maintaining a step route, and uh, that's why it gets pretty difficult to uh, yeah. maintain step at times when we're moving quite fast. Um, yeah, in some ways, you might think that, you know, oh, Final Fantasy V is a two-dimensional game. Uh, how hard can it be to keep step count? Um, you know, in some ways, there's probably an argument to be made that it is a little bit easier than uh, um, some of the 3D games like FF7 and FF8 that have step counts as well. Um, but the, the, the tricky thing about FF5, uh, like we've mentioned, is not only do we get access to dash, so we'll be moving twice as fast as we are now, it's, it's not as hard, or it's not as easy to be able to make mistakes and fix them in Final Fantasy yes. V, just due to the way that it yeah. works. Um, also just, after... Just do the, have the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say, after, um... I, know, I guess it's about 30 minutes. We'll also be introduced to some other movement tech that's going to be compounded with the step count uh, called half steps. So that'll kind of like add to the difficulty of actually performing the step count. Yeah, that's right. Uh, without getting too technical, because it's it's not really that important, but uh, the way that the step count is often routed is that you'll be uh, you'll be entering screens with two steps remaining to getting another encounter and then transitioning screens will uh, refresh it. So often, you know, if you make one extra step, then it's just going to result in an encounter before you leave the screen. And, and quite often that just means the, the step count is dead and there's no way to recover. Um, there are some uh, there are some exceptions to this and especially uh, utilizing half steps on the world map that's sort of an opportunity to uh, fix problems that you may have but a lot of the time you know unless you make the mistake in in the perfect spot you're really not gonna even be afforded the opportunity to fix it right so I guess uh, we can talk a little bit about like th there hasn't been too much going on in this game this game kind of has a little bit of a slow intro um, it's it's pretty safe. There's not a lot of stuff that happens. I mean, the intro cutscene itself is a little over four minutes. But um, thus far, like it, it has a very very uh, quick gathering of the party members in this game, right? So like we've just begun, and we can already see on uh, Darklight Boko's screen that all four of the main characters are already on the scene, right? Um, and uh, so, like, the, the general gist of the, the plot that we have thus far is that we have Bart's, or Butts, I suppose, if we're looking at the, uh, <laughs> the English patch. Um, it's kind of a wanderer. He's uh, hanging out with his chocobo, uh, Boko, and uh, a meteorite crashes nearby. And there at the meteorite, he meets Lena, the girl with the pink hair, uh, a mysterious man with amnesia, Galuth, and... Those three decide to, they say, we're going to go to the wind shrine. The wind has stopped. We got to figure out what's going on. We're all headed there for various reasons. Um, and the very first area we go to is the Pirate's Cove, where we meet the pirate captain, Ferris, who, which is happening on uh, Darklight Boko's screen and uh, Accident's screen right now. Um, so the party gets together really quickly. But like right now, the main movement of the game is to be going to the wind shrine, find out why the wind has stopped. Yeah, and if you noticed, uh, if you're paying attention at the end of the FF7 remake uh, uh, runners, uh, the opening cutscene, uh, sort of what brings them all together is that the king of Tycoon, who is uh, Lena's father, uh, he sort of notices the winds behaving strangely. There's a pirate ship, which we now know is captained by Ferris. Uh, they notice the winds behaving strangely. And then Bart's, uh, like Curtis mentioned, is sort of just wandering around and just by happenstance, you know, uh, is right there when a meteor drops. So uh, they all sort of 
they all sort of have their fates intertwined and they're heading to our first dungeon, which is going to be the Wind Shrine. And we're going to see that on Team Mog's screen pretty quick, followed shortly thereafter by Team Choco. Yeah, I would also like to point out, because this is just a thing I really enjoy, on Darklight Boko's screen right now, you see the actual mechanism that's driving Ferris's ship is the Sea Dragon Sildra. Um, and there's like a really fun thing I like to say about Sildra, because uh, when I run this game, I always point out while I'm running it, that the Sildra sound effect is my favorite sound effect in maybe every Final Fantasy game. I just love <laughs> it. It's so good. Um, and there's a really good book I read about this game, about the release history of it and the development history of it, um, that said the, the sound effect engineer for this game was Yatsunori Mitsuda, who would then after this go on to do the soundtrack for uh, Chrono Trigger. Um, mm. So like a, a really accomplished wow. uh, composer made the sound effects in this game. And this game has some of the best sound effects. The Sildra sound effect is so good. The uh, the Demi sound effect is just mwah, chef's kiss. It's got some really, really good sounds in it. Yeah, it does. This, uh, this FF is kind of <clears throat> noted for its sound. I mean, a, a lot of FFs are noted for their, their soundtracks. But FF5 especially just has so many... So many great songs and great sound effects in yeah. it. Um, so uh, you saw on Darklight Boko's stream, uh, he got off the ship and took a couple of little extra steps. This is for a step route. Um, so not only are we going to be moving in certain ways through dungeons and avoiding specific tiles at specific times, um, we're also going to be taking uh, extra steps in a lot of rooms to sort of um, basically remove encounters from later on in the run. Um, we're going to take a quick little detour into the side room to grab a broadsword. Uh, Galoof does, is the only person right now that does not actually have a weapon equipped, so we need that for him. Yeah, and it and, actually uh, ends up being on the first boss. to equip it in the boss, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, you can uh, equip things in the item menu of this game, and uh, in this category, and in this game in general, we will be seeing that used quite often. Nice pattern on Wing Raptor here. Uh, Wing Raptor's kind of been meant to be a sort of an introductory boss. There's not a whole lot that really happens here. He basically just uh, has an open phase where you can hit him, and then after three turns, he'll go into a closed phase. But we, we, won't, we won't see that in the speedrun unless you get uh, extremely unlucky. With, mm -hmm. Oh, like that. <laughs> Caster's Curse. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, great to see that Caster's Curse is uh, you know, live it's and well. And well. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a time loss. You just got to sit here and wait. Yeah, and it's pr it's pretty rare that that happens, but it's not like unheard of. That's not like the craziest RNG, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing that could happen. It's kind of uh, in a lot of ways. There's not really much to Wing Raptor other than uh, you know, like we mentioned, you need to give Galuf a weapon, which conveniently enough uh, is given to us in a secret chest immediately before the boss. Uh, and then other than that, it's mostly just a DPS race. Uh, typically, if you get uh, Typically, if you get a number of turns off before his first turn, you're safe. Um, but, you know, it can vary between one and three. It just sort of depends on how fast you go and stuff like that. Um, the only other thing that is going to be important is that he can do a number of different attacks, varying from Breath Wing, which is an AoE attack, uh, as well as single target attacks. Uh, the only reason why this matters is because you're going to see on our way out of the uh, the wind shrine, we've got some business to do in an encounter. So, uh, depending on how much damage we've taken on this boss, uh, we need to be a little bit careful that uh, you know our our party members have enough health to survive. Yeah, and uh, that encounter that we'll be getting into, uh, I think, is our first real RNG moment, right? Like this this next fight could be over immediately, depending on what we need. Or it may take several turns, so it, it'll be interesting oh, yes. to see what they get. Yeah. So before then, uh, we've made it to the interior of the Wind Shrine, and uh, importantly, uh, we're getting our first set of jobs. So from this shrine, we get Knight, Monk, Thief, Black Mage, White Mage, and Blue Mage, and we pretty much use all of them. I think this route doesn't use Monk, but uh, all the rest of them do see use in the speedrun, and... This is sort of the main thing that differentiates uh, Final Fantasy V from its, you know, two SNES counterparts is its job system. Maybe you, one of you want to touch on that? Yeah, so um, if you've ever played Final Fantasy III, you might have noticed that, that game also used a job system. And this is a much more refined version of that. 
basically in this game you only get a few characters but you can freely switch their their job class um and that's based upon story you know story points where we get to these crystals and we'll get crystal shards that teach us um jobs and every character can use every job and each job determines what equipment you can equip and what abilities you can learn and the thing about jobs in this game is that once you get AP by winning battles on jobs enough, you can actually permanently learn their abilities. And when you permanently learn an ability, that means you can switch to a different job and then equip that ability that you've learned. So you can combine job abilities as much as you want in this game just by getting the AP to learn them. And that is why this game is so like di uh, diverse is because of all the possible combinations and we'll be using them quite a lot in this speed run. Yeah, and if you were watching uh, Mog's stream, uh, you may have noticed that uh, we immediately changed three people to blue mages, and that is for this first encounter that we alluded to already. Uh, these are the goblins. Oh, good luck. Yes, and this is... Oh, good luck indeed. So, oh, wow. yeah, what we were waiting for there was uh, for them to use Goblin Punch, which, as you can see, fortunately, they got it very quickly, and it hit a blue mage. So, uh, basically, how blue magic works in this game is that... Uh, if you are a blue mage, or uh, like we mentioned with the AP system, if you have the learning ability, which is from the blue mage equipped, uh, if you take damage from specific abilities uh, from you know different enemies, in this case, Goblin Punch, uh, once the battle ends, you actually learn that ability. So uh, Team Mog's got Goblin Punch, and it's going to be very important for uh, very important for the early game because it's a, a very high damage ability, and it's pretty much the best thing we have at this point of the game. Yeah, it also has a, a neat little um, side effect as well. Uh, it will do extra damage if you're the same level as the enemy that you're casting it on. Uh, and, like, considerably more, too. So we it do watch our weapon levels. Damage, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we watch our levels and we watch a lot of different stats through the course of this game. On my, <laughs> on my way home today, before we did the commentary, I was thinking to myself of a little joke that, like... I hope everybody likes algebra because we're going to be doing a lot of counting in this game. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> between steps and levels and all kinds of other things. Yeah, Speaking the of... strategies. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, c continue. This is something else. Oh, I was going to say uh, the strategies that we'll actually be using um, later on in the run. We're actually going to call death by math um, because yes. we'll be doing quite a bit of math in relation to um, enemy levels. And we also needed to do quite a bit of math for Team Choco, who. Uh, unfortunately, it took considerably longer than Team Mog to learn Goblin Punch. Uh, mm. But just as we finished talking there, he did manage to learn Goblin Punch, and he's on his way to Tool, which is sort of the next uh, story point in the game. Yeah, and you may see uh, some of the runners, probably all the runners, but I mean, I don't know yet, uh, take a side, uh, a little journey over to the tutorial house to get a couple extra items here. Um now, I'm not as familiar with this glitchless run. I usually run glitched myself, where the beginner house is entirely optional. It is just safety strats. So I'm, I think it's probably still safety in this one, but I'm not 100% about that. Yeah, yeah there used case, to it... be a, a fight oh, yeah, that you would do in there the, with the Black Goblin. You would skip it in the Wind Shrine, you would do it there instead. But that's mostly been routed out. So now if you go to the beginner house, it's just for the safety items. Mm. Yeah, the older routes... Uh... There's a chest in the upstairs room of this house where there is another goblin, and you can elect to uh, learn Goblin Punch there instead. But, uh, you know, like we said, uh, the step route has changed now to do a bunch of extra steps uh, before the Pirate's Cove, and now you just get it on the way out of the Wind, wind Shrine. Um, hmm. They're just headed into the beginner's house because there's a lot of really nice goodies in there. Probably the most important thing is that there's a Phoenix down, as well as an Ether and some other stuff you can sell. Um, but... One of the main reasons why you want these safety pickups, especially in a marathon, and especially for Glitchless, is that uh, Phoenix Downs are incredibly expensive in Final Fantasy V. Yes. <laughs> and you just, you just simply can't buy extra, extra Phoenix Downs for the most part, so they're going to be electing to pick up every extra one they can. I think... Uh, I, one, I know one of, the, one of the runners actually picked up uh, an extra Phoenix down right at the beginning meteorite. Uh, there's one in the beginner's house, and then there's also one behind uh, Zox's house, which you'll see Team Mog and Team Choco on right now. Uh, quick question, actually, for, uh, for you two. I am not familiar with the route that Rupon is running right now. Are either of you familiar with that? I uh, am I, a little bit. Uh, I am ahead, a little though. bit as well, yeah. Because yeah, I, I was going to... 
Yes, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was oh, going to yeah. say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed he took the uh, the instant exit, uh, the the warp in the back of the room after getting the jobs, and I haven't seen that in a um, in a run before. Usually, you just take a warp tile and it puts you right onto the world map, which seems like it could be faster. But obviously, we stopped to get the um, the the blue magic on the way down, right? So we can kind of take out two things at once, and it's not that much extra time to just walk down anyway. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, I wonder what's going on here. Yeah, I believe of... Rupan's running without a, I, a different step route or without a step route. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, so his step route is actually a little bit different. And there is one major difference, actually, that we'll talk about uh, in about an hour from now. Um, but he is, like we mentioned, uh, using the chest in the upstairs area of the... Uh, of the beginner's house to learn Goblin Punch there. And, and strangely enough, um, due to the marathon setting, he's actually probably maybe even coming out ahead uh, because the other runners are choosing to enter here anyway. Yeah. Just to pit the, the extra pickup. So he's uh, he didn't have to lock, walk the long way out of the shrine and he was coming in here anyway. So uh, in terms of a marathon, he's actually uh, not too bad. But right, uh, yeah. yeah, you saw him go into the menu. Since he didn't do a menu beforehand, he's made all three of his characters blue mages, and he set the battle speed to one, uh, which lets the goblin get his attacks off quicker. And unfortunately, he's not getting the attack that he wants. It's been a number of rounds already. So he's yeah. just got to wait it out and heal if necessary when it comes up. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, yeah. though. It's being especially harsh right now. Oh, yeah. This is probably the most unlucky goblin fight of the three of them. There we go. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, Boko's getting up to, um, what's going to be our first, I, I mean, I guess we already had one boss, but our first kind of like real boss of the run. I think this is where I usually begin splitting at. Um, and we'll see him change uh, a couple jobs. Uh, in Tool, we picked up some magic, and uh, we're going to be getting usage out of that here. Um, and basically take this boss and really just turn it into a very, uh, very simple kind of um, one-two punch with some uh, black mages, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. the way magic works in this game is um, you just, it's really simple, you just buy the spell, and then any job that uh, has access to that spell that's sufficiently leveled up enough to use that spell, um, every character will have access to. So um, we bought, in particular, th we bought Fire, Thunder, and Cure. Cure just for general healing purposes, and then fire and thunder to be used later. And particularly this boss um, it will be weak to thunder, so we'll be spamming thunder like there's no tomorrow. And we do see some party rearranging here, so that's going to happen a couple times uh, throughout the course of the game. We'll actually see who's in the lead position and who's displayed on the world map will actually change. So this fight coming up on Team Mog stream, this is Carlobos. He's a, it's a giant crab monster, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be making use of the magic that we bought, and that's kind of why we made everyone a black mage. We also put pretty much everyone, I think, uh, in the back row because uh, magic is not affected uh, negatively by being in the back row. So uh, this boss has a number of physical attacks, so that'll help out a little bit there, and it'll help out a little bit uh, for subsequent enemies as well. But other than that, we're pretty much just spamming, uh, just spamming Bolt. Uh, he can do a number of things. You see that Galuf on Team Mog stream is uh, paralyzed right now. That's something that can happen. Um, it's not really a big deal. We're just going to spam Bolt with everyone who's able to, and after a few rounds, he's going to, he's going to uh, be taken down. Yeah, I think I believe it's six every time, if I uh, remember correctly. My HP. <laughs> <laughs> So, pretty standard fight for Team Mog. Team Choco's actually also coming up. Uh, you'll see, you probably saw both of them as they're coming up to this chasm, we're slowing down a bit. Uh, that's because they want to do the menu as late as possible because uh, dashing in this game, sort of like we alluded to earlier, is not, at least in this version, is not innately given to you. Uh, you need to have a thief in your party or have someone with the dash ability equipped. Otherwise, you can't... Uh, you know, you can't get that 2x move speed. So uh, they're trying to make sure that they have to move as little as possible without that uh, without that benefit. 
Also, we just heard there that great, great Sildra sound effect again. Mm, every time. Gets me every time. Yeah, her sound effects are uh, are great in a lot of different ways. They make Actually, you feel no, happy, and then they make you feel sad. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of the audio, my personal favorite track, aside from Battle on the Big Bridge, is getting ready to come up as well on uh, Team Mogs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only annoying thing about the Carlo Boss fight is uh, he can paralyze people. Usually not a big deal. Sometimes he control a little bit and paralyze, like, your, you know, people coming right up in the in the turn order. Like, it's kind of annoying, but it's not too big of a deal. Yeah. And we see uh, Rupan stream. It's actually one of my favorite moments in the game. Uh, you mash text for a couple minutes in Tool, and then you take two steps in the world map, going to the boat, and then you mash text <laughs> for another couple minutes. It's great. It's classic Final Fantasy, baby. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Rupan also doing a little bit of a, of another small deviation. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that this will be the case, but he did buy uh, the... I'm not sure what the specific translation is, but he bought the Antidote spell uh, in Tool as mm. well, where the other two runners did not. So it is possible that Rupan may be saving us from some later eye candy in about 20 minutes. You're going to see <laughs> on Mog and Choco. Uh, but we'll see when we get there. So uh, on Team Mog and Team Choco will be there just momentarily as well. We're in the, uh, the ghost ship. Uh, this is like probably the first big area where you're going to see uh, you're going to see the step manipulations in the, an actual context. So we did a lot of step manipulation at the beginning of the run uh, on the Chocobo, and there's no actual encounters, but now we are in a fully-fledged encounter zone, and we need to be extremely precise with our steps. And that's why you'll see, especially going around corners, runners are going to you know, be extra careful with their inputs. Yeah, one of the things is, uh, I, I think between different skills of runners and depending on how cautious they want to be, um, you'll see different amounts of hesitation at corners. Like when yeah. I play it, I'm very, very careful because I don't like to, to mess my step route up. So I take a lot of time. I, I stop and I go, okay, this is where I need to turn right or this is where I need to turn left. But um, but as, as you start watching more and more skilled runners, runners you'll see their, their turns are much more precise and much quicker. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, some of the screens in this step. game, you can actually run closer to the wall than you might think, um, just based on how the tile looks. So, uh, yeah, corners in this game can be very deceptive, depending on, like, <laughs> what the tile set for the room is. So we haven't talked about the story again uh, for a bit, mm. so as sort of a recap... Um, you know, when they got to the shrine, all the crystals shattered, and that sort of sets up the story for our little journey here. Um, when we visited Zok in, uh, in the town, he gave us the key to the Torna Canal, which is how we managed to get through with the boat, and what leads us to the, uh, the Carlobos boss, which we see for our third time on Team Tomberry screen. And also, a pivotal plot point, uh, we just learned on Team Mog's stream, as well as about to learn again on Team Choco, that uh, uh, Ferris is, in fact, a woman, which nobody knew until now. There's a very, uh, there's a very cute scene in a uh, tool. If you visit the inn where Ferris is staying, where <laughs> Bart and Galoof, like, go into Ferris's room to wake them up, and, like, I guess to, like, you know, just talk or whatever, <laughs> and then, like, little hearts appear above their heads. Although, according <laughs> to this scene... Uh, that we're looking at right now on Exiden's uh, screen, they still assume that Ferris was a man at that point, so I think they're just like, oh, what a hot dude. <laughs> Speaking of hot individuals, Team Mog coming up to our next boss. Uh, this is the Siren, and much like its namesake, uh, she's trying to seduce our main characters and is succeeding with three out of four of them. So all you see up at the top there are just illusions that are seducing them. Fortunately, Galuf is uh, completely immune to this, and he's going to set the record straight. Yeah, um, Siren is kind of 
another one of the sort of lo- er, m- more well-known RNG points in the run just because of the spells mm-hmm. that she can cast. Um, yeah. You can lose or gain a little bit of time on this fight depending on you know what kinds of spells she casts if she decides to you know kill people or if she decides to be nice um nothing too major here but she does have a myriad of spells she can cast and in particular um one thing that we do need to make sure of is that we kill siren uh before the th- ter- the third turn of combat and that's because um if she gets past turn three i believe she transforms and her item drop changes yeah, and um, we're gonna be getting a bronze armor from her, which we actually will need to sell for money later. If she transforms, you get a different drop, which is worth a lot less money. Yeah, you need to. So we're, this is the first time we're gonna be using the Goblin Punch ability that we learned, and you need to do four of them to kill her, uh, unless she cures herself. So th- there's a number of things that she can do. Haste is probably the worst thing. Uh, slow's yeah. not too bad, but uh, hasting herself is really bad because it gives her extra turns. Um, she can also cure herself, and she can also do single target abilities, which will uh, one-shot any of our members, uh, which is really bad because we want to conserve as many Phoenix Downs as possible, especially in Glitchless. Mm-hmm. So those are sort of the main things we're looking out for. A, a lot of our characters actually need AP here, too, so um, Scan is There's probably the best the thing best in one. terms of safety. Yep. Yeah, oh. so... Very nice fight for Team Mog. Yeah, they've been getting very lucky thus far. There's a lot of game to go, but... (laughs) Yeah, Goblin Punch will make short work of a lot of the early bosses. Yeah. We're also getting ready to see the introduction of that that technique I was talking about earlier, the half-step. So you'll see on Team Mog's screen... Uh, they'll be pausing and going into the menu and coming back out of the menu several times on different parts of their walk around the world map. Um, and sometimes they won't even do anything. They'll just open the menu, close the menu. And if you do that on a tile that you would get an encounter or close to when you would get an encounter, it will reset the encounter uh, rate and you'll be able to push encounters off indefinitely pretty much. Yeah, and this is uh, this is one of the places that if you are afforded the opportunity, you can fix your step count because uh, even if you're not pushing ahead the encounters like that, uh, half stepping does actually a lot you free steps. So it, you won't anytime you do a half step, if it's not affecting the step count in that way where it's pushing the encounters back, it won't consume a step either. So very nice way to fix uh, your step count if you're able to. Yeah. On Team Choco's stream, uh, Siren opened with Mute, which is perfectly fine. Uh, Mute doesn't actually affect blue magic spells anyway, but even if it did, she used it on the Thief, so that's totally fine. Unfortunately, she did kill Galuf. Doesn't really affect our ability to kill her, but uh, Team Choco will be down, a single Phoenix down now, which uh, hopefully won't be a problem. Other than that, not bad at all. Team Choco takes out Siren. Easy peasy. Um, and you saw on Team Mog stream, um, in Carwin, we didn't really do a whole lot. We uh, bought some potions. We picked up a thousand gil in the pub, just for some gil safety. And we also picked up a very important item, actually, which is the ice rod. Um, we'll be seeing a lot more of rods. Um, if someone wants to talk later about rods, we can. Um, going into North Mountain here... Uh, I believe we're going to have an encounter that we're going to take for experience on Step Route uh, with the Rock Slugs. Yep. Garters, as they're called in the English translation. Um, and def- more step manipulation to do here. Some I- inventory management that we're going to do during this Rock Slug fight as well, which will be another um, pretty important thing during the run. We're going to be arranging items in our-, our inventory during battle quite a lot, just to make it so that we have easier access to things that we need later on without having to scroll down forever yeah i think it's a sign of a good runner of this game too is that like during the small small bits of downtime that we see in battles really good runners will arrange their different items and get them ready for multiple battles down the road yeah you in uh, in north mountain you'll pretty much see every route at least every route that i'm aware of will fight an encounter here um even if you're off step count it doesn't really matter you can pretty much fight anything um, you want to avoid, uh, you want to avoid some things, but for the most part, anything is killable, and uh, you just need to get a little bit of experience because we want to hit a level threshold for the next boss, not this one that's upcoming, but the one after. 
the reason why levels don't matter for this boss we're going to see momentarily uh, alluded to by Mythic with the Ice Rods. Um, and you'll see why our levels don't matter uh, because we have a very easy way to dispense of this boss. Levels don't matter and the damage is all made up. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're going to see the power of Rods very, very soon. Um, also, you might have seen uh, on Team Mogstream, they walked through a flower which caused poison. Unfortunately, we're going to be seeing that poison effect for a while, but now we've got Magisa. Um, she's always going to kill somebody turn one. Killing Ferris is actually the best thing here. Um, so that's good. And then, uh, yeah, we're just going to use an, a rod. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's <laughs> and Magisa. That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason... Uh... Elemental rods double as both as weapons and as essentially consumables because if you can you, in this game you can equip them uh, and then break them <laughs> and when you do that it uses higher level spells than you would ever have access to uh, and subsequently do significantly more damage than you would ever be able to do uh, so in this case it just one shots her uh, straight up and this was an item that we just got for free uh, from our small detour in Carwin. Yeah, in the uh, in the intro scene of the game, when we saw Lina's father, the King of Tycoon, uh, he flew off on his wyvern, right? On uh, the Hiryu, as it's known. Um, and that's what we're finding right now on uh, Boko's screen. We've uh, been kind of trailing Lina's father, um, and we found his helmet, which when we got into that battle with Magisa, we saw that she kind of like set it there as a trap for us. Um, but now we actually can use the Hiryu. So pretty early into the game, we already have our first uh, flying transportation. Flying so, is much better than walking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, as we mentioned, uh, oh wow, Team Choco also gets the best possible RNG. Um, and you're probably Beautiful. wondering why we're saying this. So why does it matter who she kills? Um, like we mentioned, uh, you're going to see all our runners walk over the plant that inflicts poison. We actually are doing that deliberately. Um, it's not only like a, a step count consideration, but we want our characters to be in critical HP. Except for one. Uh, you're going to see later on, in about, I guess, 5-10 minutes, uh, we're going to get our first use of the knight class. And uh, in this route, Ferris is going to be our knight, so she's the one that we want to have at higher HP because she's going to be tanking the hits for everyone else uh, who are in critical HP. And that's sort of the uh, the prerequisite to uh, to the Knight's Guard ability. So we're going to be seeing that very soon. Very useful ability early on. And uh, the reason why, like we said, it, for her to kill Ferris is, is ideal because we were going to heal her anyway. But if she kills someone else, when you use a Phoenix down, they're no longer in critical HP, so you actually have to do a separate step in battle where you uh, equip, a, uh, equip a low-level weapon and attack them just to get them back into critical HP. Yeah, many a run has died on the the next boss or become hairy by um, yeah. having the wrong person die there and then just forgetting to, to knife them back into crit HP. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely it's, never uh, made that mistake myself. <laughs> it's like <laughs> theoretically possible to YOLO it, but only if you get very lucky. Yeah. And also, uh, what I alluded to earlier with uh, Rupon possibly doing us a solid, you, you've probably noticed by now that every step uh, our runners take since they got poison, kind of shakes the screen a little bit. Uh, Mo Team Mog and Team Choco actually have no way to get rid of this for probably 20, 25 minutes or so. Uh, Rupon yeah. actually can heal his poison, so uh, I'm not sure when he's going to elect to do it. I've definitely seen some routes do it uh, before the boss that we're alluding to that uses guard, so we'll see when he chooses to do it. But uh, other than that, unfortunately, Team Mog and Team Choco are going to have this uh, this status effect on them for a little bit. So hang tight there. So both our runners, you just saw Axe Odin come out of the, uh, uh. the basement. Uh, you can get some extra goodies there. It's just optional, but there is a Phoenix down. Uh, and then on the flip side, on Team Mog, we just got into an encounter with Ice Soldiers. Um, I didn't see, did he, was he able to get the... No, no, no Mithril Sword. No. Unlucky. So we, we've set up our party to have some thieves in it, and we're going to be stealing from those uh, from those ice soldiers. 
to try to get a Mithril Sword. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to not get it. Uh, it is immediately put to use if you do uh, on the upcoming boss that we're going to see on Mog Stream in about just a minute here. Um, but it is totally doable even without the steel. But it is yeah. a minor time loss. Yeah, I think the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think the difference in time is that you don't have to switch Galoof's equipment around if you do get it. Yeah, you don't actually need to have Galoof as a blue mage if you get the uh, the Mithril Sword, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, not only do you have to switch him, you need to switch him back afterward as well. Right. So Mog setting up the, the guard strat, uh, like we alluded to, uh, with Ferris as our knight, uh, we're going to heal her to full HP. And because everybody else is in critical HP, uh, she's going to tank all the physical damage from this boss, which fortunately enough for us, that's the only thing he can do. Uh, so the rest of our characters are just going to be uh, battering him away with goblin punches. And in just a couple rounds, it's going to, uh, that's pretty much going to be it. First try Mithril Sword. <laughs> Team Choco gaining a little bit of time here. You can actually get extra lucky. I, I don't know if these runners choose to go for it, but it, there are some strats that involve stealing two Mithril Swords, uh, which <laughs> technically does go even faster, but whether or not it's worth the trouble you know, remains to be seen. But It's uh, mostly just swag. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> Look yeah, how the, lucky the... I can get, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I always just assume that like I will mess something up, so I'm just going to get all of the extra stuff just in case. Yeah, yeah, the Mithril Sword definitely... is really nice for selling later, too. Yes, mm. that's true. And it, it's definitely one of those uh, diminishing returns kind of thing. The first Mithril Sword is really what uh, makes the time difference. And you're about you're going to see it on Team Choco's stream. So he's, uh, he's setting up his characters. Like we said, he's giving Ferris the Knight uh, and giving Bart the Blue Mage. But in this case, he's not going to make Galuf uh, a Blue Mage. We actually Ooh. don't need his damage. So Galuf is remaining, uh, remaining a thief. Because the I'll Mithril Sword sort of gives us that buffer. There. Oh, I, I missed what happened there. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, he took too many turns, and I think uh, he died to poison. Oh, I, I was going to mention that. So, yeah, if you... If you take too long on this fight, because because Team Mog and Team Choco ha elected not to... Uh, elected not to heal poison, uh, that's a thing that can happen. Uh... Rupon actually has already healed the poison on his character, so uh, this won't be a problem. He, his fight can go on essentially until his knight dies, but uh, you actually do have a time limit if you choose not to heal the poison. So a bit of a swing of lead here. Uh, Team Choco's now pulled ahead, and also, unfortunately, loading a save in this game does mean that your step count is now dead. So yeah. uh, there are a few places where Team Mog is going to encounter some difficulties. Um, hopefully not too much. We'll see when we get there, but, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see how we can pull through. Yeah. There's a, as we've seen a couple, a couple times going up to, uh, Galura now, we've seen, um, random encounters and like you've been able to see, they're, they're pretty short. They don't take a lot of time each one, but over the course of the rest of the game, that probably is going to add up considerably for Team Mog. It doesn't mean that they're out of the race by any means, because FF5 is a cruel, cruel game sometimes, so yeah. it could be anything for anyone at any point, but that will be a disadvantage that they'll be working with from now on. And yeah. one aspect of it, too, is that um, Mog can potentially elect to not take the extra steps that they would have otherwise taken on Step Route. So, yeah. you know, they can save some time doing that, and then if they do get lucky with encounters... Um, they can actually maybe come out a little bit ahead at certain points, so... Um. That's true, that's true. Yeah, for the most part, uh, all he's going to have to deal with is extra encounters. There is, unfortunately, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's two places in particular uh, that very well can be problematic. Uh, the first one's going to be coming up in about 20 minutes, uh, and then the next one about 30 minutes after that, so we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, it'll be a good way to see the difference, especially if Team Choco or Team Tomberry, or both, uh, are able to keep the step count until that point. Um, but you'll see... You'll see sort of the major places where step count can save you time, potentially. Oh, and we see down there on, uh, on Team Choco's team. 
goodbye soldier for the last time. <laughs> it breaks my heart. The saddest uh, sad effect in the whole game. <laughs> bomb bomb subs, put your uh, your uh, your Bible thumps up. Feels bad. So on Team Tonberry stream, uh, I didn't see, but it looks like he must have stolen a uh, Mithril Sword himself uh, because he's only got two blue mages. Uh, in his route, he has Lena as his knight. Um, functionally, it it doesn't matter. It's it, it serves the same purpose. Uh, there's like minor differences like that that you'll see. Um, because of the job system, you're sort of offered a lot of flexibility on who you give what, and a lot of times it doesn't really matter. So uh, just minor differences on route that you'll see. Um, but he was able to get through Galura no problem, and he is still on step count as well. So we are on a very close race at the moment. Also to mention, uh, in defeating this boss, that is actually our second shrine. Uh, at this shrine, we get a number of more jaws. We get Berserker, Red Mage, Summoner, Mystic Knight, and Time Mage. Uh, Time Mage is actually pretty useful for a lot of things. Uh, we'll be using that, and I know that um, Team Mog and Team Choco actually have some additional usage that a lot of other routes may not uh, may not have, and they actually use some additional abilities like Haste. Um, Mystic Knight doesn't really get a ton of usage, although there is some safety strats that you can do, so I believe you probably will see at least the sprite at some point. Uh, Summoner doesn't really have any use. Red Mage is not overly useful, but uh, we do use it as sort of a vessel uh, for stats and uh, the ability to cast uh, White Magic, for example. And then, unfortunately, Berserker is probably the worst job in the entire <laughs> game, uh, so you will not be seeing it uh, probably in any speed run, so unfortunately. So yeah. yeah. Oh, so go, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's something pretty interesting about um, the different mages that I'll go ahead and bring up now, since uh, we have a little bit of uh, time while we're walking to the next town. Um, so like you were saying, uh, when you learn skills through AP, you get to keep those skills and use them on other jobs. So in this example, say we, we learned Black Magic Level 1, right? And then we equipped it Black Magic Level 1 on a different class. So we uh, equipped it on Knight or something like that, right? Uh, not only does the skill come over, some of the stats will come over as well. So mm -hmm. we can do things like learn Time Mage, uh, I guess, uh, what is their skill? Dimension, which has a very high uh, magic stat to come over with it when you equip it on someone else. So we can equip Time Magic uh, or the Dimension skill on a character and then do more damage with things like rods and magic than they otherwise would have done yeah that's a really good point too um yeah stats uh are for the most part controlled by the the level at which a particular job ability is at um and then every character also has some slight innate stat differences as well um which are actually uh relatively uh they're definitely thought of when routing this game um, and as we saw on uh, uh, Team Choco's stream, uh, we did quite a bit of selling here in Karnak. Um, and then we purchased, we, we attempted to purchase a rod. And the way uh, the first shop in Karnak works is basically um, everything is super discounted when you get there to incentivize you to buy stuff. And if you try to buy something, um, you get arrested for, you know, legally purchasing an item. So, you know, <laughs> great, great job. Um, you know law system um but you actually do get that item you purchase so i believe he purchased an ice rod and you actually you do get that item so you got he got it at the the nice discounted price um and he was able to sell stuff and so the reason we sold there is we're gonna go back um because we will be using rods quite a lot and this is where we're going to get them yeah you, what am you, I? you oh uh you probably saw on the the last boss how useful or the two bosses go, excuse me, how useful ice rods are. So pretty much every route, we will, you'll see them buy an ice rod there because it's just so valuable at this point in the game, especially when we're being offered a hefty discount, which I suppose is just there to bait us into buying something story-wise <laughs> yeah. anyway. So. Um, so we just saw on a Team Choco screen, but we're getting ready to see again on a Team Mog screen and a Tonberry as well. Um, what I like to jokingly call the most gameplay intensive part of the run is getting ready to come up for them. Uh, and that is where once we are arrested, we just have to stand still for about 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
So we're basically waiting for the uh, the occupant of the next cell next to us, which is this game's Sid, to uh, bust us out of jail. He thinks he's getting ready to bomb through the wall of the jail and escape, and he accidentally bombs into our cell and is still stuck. Extremely competent, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this man can build a boat that runs on steam but cannot break out of a prison goodness I've, I've lost so much time in that little room just like I'll like walk up to the wall turn on turbo and then like go grab something to drink and then I forget that you actually have to walk another step to talk to Sid <laughs> um, so something to note here that's important um, for team Choco here is that um in C Castle Karnak, even though right now there are no encounters, the step counter is still active here because it does become an active area later. So he will be moving through here very specifically to um, keep the step counter. And it will be yeah. uh, extremely important for an upcoming segment. Um. Something you also may have noticed, and this is a, another small route difference between the route that Team Tomberry is doing and the other two, is that... Uh, on route to Karnak, uh, Rupan elected to kill, uh, I believe it was two sets of uh, five Karnaks. Um, you do have to fight some encounters in the early game um, because we do need to set up our levels in a specific way. So uh, Rupan is elected to fight a couple encounters on the world map there. Uh, and you're going to see both Team Choco and Team Mog uh, kill something else in the steamship. Um, sort of a bit of a money difference on these two routes is that uh, for Team Choco and Team Mog, uh, the encounter that they choose to kill uh itself will give more experience but uh it will require an ice rod so uh rupon is up a little bit of gill just sort of innately by choosing to kill different encounters but uh, definitely a little small interesting uh route difference that we see yeah the the rods are quite expensive um you know once we don't have the discount anymore so we we use them very only when we really really have to um and here on Choco Stream, you get or uh, yeah, sorry, Choco Stream, we get my favorite soundtrack, which is the Steamship one. Yeah, it's a good a one. Complex, yeah. There's a lot of um, complex step routing in here. Lots of uh, entering and re-entering rooms and taking seemingly random steps in between, but this is all planned out. Uh, gonna grab this Phoenix Down chest. Very important, f not only for the step count, but also because Phoenix Downs are so useful here. Um, and, and luckily for us, uh, with all the extra steps that we're taking in this area, we get the lovely screen shake uh, animation every <laughs> single time. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> Cray gasm. <laughs> no, no need to worry about that. Uh, fortunately, that's going to be going away uh, within the next few minutes anyway. But right. uh, uh, until then, if you like, uh, please tune over to Team Tomberry section where, like I said, Rupon <laughs> has graciously uh, gotten rid of it for the good of the stream. <laughs> Team Mog has left the castle? So, like we mentioned, you'll see Team Mog. Uh, Team Choke already did this, but we're going to go back in to buy some more rods. Uh, the ice rods have some more immediate use. We're going to be using all of them uh, in the steamship. Uh, you're going to see Team Choco get an encounter here, and this is the encounter that replaces the uh, the two Karnak fights that uh, Rupon did. Um, but the difference is, is that they need to uh, consume an ice rod to do it. Uh, and you may be wondering why uh, that not only are we killing this encounter here, but we've chosen to kill Galuf. Um, like we said, you do need to keep your levels at a certain threshold, so... Um, you actually don't have the option to <laughs> leave Galuf alive there, so uh, with this route, they're actually going to need to consume a Phoenix down here to uh, bring him back to life before this next boss, which we are going to be using more ice rods. Yeah, and this oh, is another yeah. um, RNG boss as well. So we're going to start fighting this boss, and they're going to transform after our first turn. So we'll throw a rod at them, and then they're either going to transform into a fire tornado or like a fire hand, and both are great sprites. Very, very metal, very brutal. Um, <laughs> but we want to see the tornado. That's what we want to see, because the hand, if I remember, it absorbs or it just nullifies ice damage? Yeah, I, I actually can't recall, but uh, in any case, you know, I, I, I assume it's 50-50. If you do get that bad roll, uh, it is just sort of a time loss that you have to deal with. Let's see what Team Choco gets. 
Which he did, the unfortunately, hand. get the hand. Oof. Nice crit, of course. Very impactful. So, like you see, the hand uh, results in a few things. It means that one of your party members is going to get killed by uh, the uh, single target attack that he does. And uh, you also have to attack him to change his form. So, now that we've changed his form back, we're going to revive Lena and we're going to be using our second ice rod. And that will finish off the fight for us. Yeah, and so depending on what form you actually kill Liquid Flame in, we'll, we'll change his drop. Um, Team Choco kills him in the human form, which means we're going to get a Flame Scroll as a drop. Uh, if you kill him in the Tornado form, you get the much more valuable Flame Bow. Uh, it sells for a lot more gill. So, uh, generally speaking, as long as you get either Mithril Sword or the Flame Bow, you're generally okay on gill. Um, uh, you, you can do without either but you would prefer to kill him in the tornado form just for time's sake, but also money. Right. So you'll see on Team Mog's stream, uh, because he's not on step route, he has to search for the same encounter uh, that Team Choco killed. Uh, those poltergeists that he just got uh, aren't going to be acceptable because they absorb ice. Um, the reason why he's pausing at the beginning of each encounter, and you probably saw because he just reset uh, just before this as well, is that the encounter that you need to kill in this route uh, is a little bit scary because you do have to go pretty quick to make sure that you don't encounter any difficulties. Um, because, you know, like you see, all your characters are at low HP. Even Ferris, who's not in at 1 HP, is still at, you know, a one-shot uh, threshold there. So you need to make sure you get the, uh, the two moves, or three moves, excuse me, off before any of their turns. Otherwise, you won't have... Uh, you won't have time to kill them. Yeah, Fortunately, I, I will, the second time's a charm. find the encounter. Yep. Mm. Yeah, you don't really have any alternatives at this point. Um, because either, you know, either you're going to get an encounter that doesn't have enough experience. Uh, or, like I said, any encounter with those poltergeists is automatically off limits due to the absorb uh, ice. Right. But, Ooh, uh, like excitingly enough. Conberry yeah. and Mog, yeah. Both Same going battle. into. And you can actually see uh, the... The, the the threshold here is small enough that perhaps if Tonberry gets hand and uh, Mog gets tornado, we may see uh, Mog catch back up again. Yeah. So Rupon using his first ice rod. Uh, he's just doing a little bit of menu management while he waits, and we're going to see what he gets. It is, in oh, fact, the hand, hand. So just like before, Rupon's going to have to do a physical attack, followed by a revive, followed by another ice rod. We check on Team Mogstream. Uh, he's All used the his hands. first. <laughs> three for three hands. Wow. Everybody catching these hands. Very unlucky. <laughs> so Rufon like... got a little bit lucky, actually. He, uh, The person that got killed doesn't require AP in his route, so mm. he does get to save a Phoenix down there. So very nice for him. Yeah, we did get to kill Liquid Flame in Tornado mode for uh, both Tonberry and Mog as well. Yes, that's right. We did see, uh, I believe Choco killed him in uh, human form, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, so small differences there. Um, but now we're going to see all three runners go into the, uh, I would say, <laughs> semi-infamous Karnak escape. Um, you know, we've said a few times all along that there's two areas in particular that not having step count is problematic. Uh, this is one of them. Um, Choco shouldn't have any issues just running through this area uh with no encounters um the problem for team mog is going to be a few things one is that uh as you'll see choco got the first of three 2000 guild chests so you actually have to do quite a bit of walking in this area on um, the encounter rate's not super high but uh you do still have to walk pretty long distances so uh not being on step count you have to go a long way without getting an encounter uh, there is a small caveat. So when you get an encounter, there's going to be one of two. If you see a single Karnak uh, off step count, that's no problem because that enemy is just going to run away. Uh, so no problems there. If you see the three Karnaks and Soldier, that's just going to be a reset. Um, in Glitchless, you don't really have a way to kill this encounter realistically uh you'll see some glitch routes have a backup where you use another rod but you know money wise it's not super feasible but that being said even if it was uh it's really not an option anyway because uh 
we need to keep our levels in a certain threshold for the next area. So uh, Team Mog is just going to have to, you know, give it the old elbow grease until he's able to get through uh, with either no encounters or only single Karnak encounters. Yeah. So very yeah. unfortunate, but we'll just hope that he, like I said, the encounter rate is not super high, so it is very possible that he could just get through it first try, and that's what we're going to hope for. Yeah, I think that uh, the step count is much, much more dangerous in what I would call World 1 uh, to yep. get off of step count. But later, it, it doesn't become such a big issue. We can end up learning skills like escape and smoke to kind of get away from encounters that may have lower uh, escape rates. Yeah, I would say by the time you get to World 2, even a little bit before then, it's not the end of the world to not have step count. Uh, it certainly does save time, yes, but the the bulk of the time save or uh, bulk of potential time save, if you will, is in you know the first hour and a half. Um, so this is going to be the first big test for Mog. Another small thing, uh, you see the uh, the runners use this pot. Uh, that's a free full restore, and that's why it's really nice for Rupon that uh, uh, Liquid Flame elected to kill Ferris because uh, the pot gives it a full gives her a full revive as well. So very nice for him to conserve some uh, Phoenix Downs for Marathon safety. There's uh, something I'd like to point out about uh, what we're getting ready to see on Mog and Tonberry's screens. After we fight the little mini boss outside of the castle, there's a small cutscene where um, we receive the the job crystals from the fire crystal, right? And what I really enjoy is that they actually put this in here. Uh, you see three of the crystals fall to our, our party member's feet, and then two of them fly on the outside and just go off of the mm. screen. And I always thought, I like I didn't notice that until recently, and I was like, oh, two of the crystals just fly off into the air somewhere. I wonder if we'll see those later. Hmm. No, hmm. I'm lost to time. I guess, guess we'll have to wait and see. I suppose so. <laughs> so Team Mog just got their first encounter. Oh, and it's the... Ah. Oh, no. I'm not sure he's aware. These I, I, I think I neglected to mention, these encounters are actually unfleeable, so that's that's why you, you really don't have a chance. Uh, Harsh. Harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Very close to getting out, but he's just going to have to try again, unfortunately. Uh, strangely enough, essentially that very encounter is the encounter you fight at the end of Karnak Escape, and that's what you saw uh, Rupon do right now. It, we dispatch the encounter with uh, two ice rods, no problem at all, and Rupon is out of the Karnak Escape. Meanwhile, in Team Choco, we are in the uh, the next major area, the area which uh, is part of the... Well, it's pretty much the exact reason, and you get a little teaser there for that encounter that you just got, why we have to be so diligent about our uh, levels all the way through. Um, we're going to be learning the level 5 death spell pretty soon, so naturally we need a blue mage uh, at a multiple of 5, and ideally only one person. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we'll have some problems. Uh, but before then, uh, we're going to be fighting Ifrit here on Choco Stream. Again, yeah, a little bit of RNG. Ifrit, you can get a Phoenix down, but he just dies to a couple ice rods. No big deal. Yeah, these two these two bosses in this area are pretty much the same. The the only real RNG is that um, uh, the opening attack that he does can vary. Uh, the both Ifrit and the upcoming boss uh, can definitely <laughs> deplete your Phoenix down stash. Uh, but luckily for Team Choco, he did an AOE attack, which doesn't have the power to kill anyone. So um, two simple ice rods, and we are done. Oko. At the final 2,000 guild chest, making his way out. Can he get... He's out of the castle. Can he make it to the boss? And he does. We are home free from Karnak Escape in just three good. tries, I believe. Not too bad at all. Yeah, that's really, really good. You can get trolled so hard uh, with encounters there off steps. So good for him to get out. And the other thing, like Toji mentioned earlier, is that you know we need a, lot of, a number of chests in Karnak Escape for the guild. Um, so yeah, if you're off step, having to take those extra steps to get the guild that is required is just so, is really rough, so. Good to see him get out in one piece. Oh, Rupon making his way up to Ifrit as well. Uh, we're gonna see if he gets, uh, any different luck. 
Meanwhile, uh, you'll see on Team Choco stream, uh, we've encountered page 64. This is where we're going to be learning the level 5 death spell, so he pretty much just has to uh, hold off until we uh, hold off until we see the level 5 death spell. Um, if we've set it up correctly, I believe in this route, Galuf is level 5, while the other three, uh, well, in this case, uh, Bartz is level 6, so he won't actually be... Uh, or any, all three of them are level six, other than Galuf. So uh, he'll be the only one that uh, gets taken out by the spell, and therefore we'll be able to learn it with only one casualty. In this route, we so actually also elect to catch there. him. Yeah, <laughs> the ten. <laughs> there it is. Goodbye, Galuf. You oh. have served us well. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now we have it. So he does need to do a little bit of damage. We want to get him into the catch threshold. We didn't really talk about it, but right now Lena is a mediator or beastmaster, depending on the translation. Um, so she's going to be able to catch this monster. And uh, when you, after you've caught an enemy, your catch command changes to release until you use it. And uh, at some point later on, we'll be releasing the page 64 back into the wild. And uh, in return for his newly found freedom, he will uh, do some damage for us. So. Please look forward to it. Yeah, we'll actually be using mediators um, for some very, very specific and important fights in this run. And at least for me, casually, mediator was like the last job yeah. I ever considered using. Mm. Um, so it's yeah. really cool to see mediator be quite important in the speedrun. You know, not used all, super often, but when it is used, it's it's crucial. I think one of the things about Final Fantasy V in general, but especially as a speedrun, that makes it a very, very good speedrun, is that it is a, a deceptively deep game. Like, on a casual yeah. play, there are entire systems you may not even ever interface with, like, knowingly or unknowingly. And, and yet they are there. <laughs> like, they do exist. And so in the speedrun, if you have played FF5 casually, you learn twice as much just doing the speed run than you knew the entire casual run it's really deep and it makes it a very very good casual and speed game yeah, yeah just absolutely. some small just some small updates here uh you probably saw on team tomberry screen in his page 64 he got an instant level 5 death so very nice for them uh so both tomberry and choco have level 5 death learn uh, meanwhile on choco stream we just fought byblos it's for all intents and purposes, the exact same fight as Ifrit. Uh, the only difference being that we're using fire rods instead of ice rods. Um, pretty similar RNG. You just need to see if he's going to uh, kill someone at the get-go or not. Uh, if he does, if you do need AP on that character, uh, you need to revive them. Otherwise, simply use two fire rods and uh, you are good to go. He also leaves us with a, uh, with a concerning message that his master still lives. So uh, hang on for about three hours, and uh, <laughs> we may see a uh, end to that. Monka S. <laughs> so yeah, Team like Choco Bublos is made out of paper. That's why he's weak to fire. <laughs> so Team Choco just about to exit the ancient library. Team Tomberry not long behind, and uh, meanwhile Team or uh, Team Tomberry, excuse me. Team Mog, however, just finished up Ifrit, so his next goal is going to be to learn level 5 death on his way to Byblos. Um, even off step count, it shouldn't really be too much of a big deal to find a page 64. Um, they're a pretty common enemy, so uh, yeah. once he sets up whatever you know jobs he needs, he can uh, find it pretty good. Um, interestingly enough, you actually encounter uh, a number of very similar enemies. Uh, page 32, page 64, and page 128. Um, there actually was a strat, I don't think, I'm not sure if this route has the capability to do it, but you can actually uh, manipulate those encounters to um, change to the page you want. Not unlike the um, the Tantarian enemy in FF9, if you're familiar with that, you can actually uh, uh, you can actually get them to turn into the enemy that you want. Yeah, they'll, uh, if you do certain things, like on some of them it's like dealing enough damage, they'll... Uh sort of go back into the book and then re-emerge evolved as the, the next number, 32 yep. into 64, and 64 into 128. There's this, there's Mog's page 64. Relatively painless, only a couple encounters. Not too bad. 
you'll see uh, his page 64 did a physical attack on Galuf right away. We need to make sure Galuf is healthy because we don't want him to die from anything other than level 5 death. So uh, we've got to keep Galuf in particular healthy, um, which there, not bad at all. He gets he level died. 5 doing the second try, and then he's, he's gone again. <laughs> Very <laughs> unfortunate. Tragic. I was really hoping he, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd stick it to him this time, but <laughs> didn't get there. The AP routing in the glitchless route is is much much more uh, difficult than in the glitched version, mm. um, which I'm most used to running. But I know that in that one, I almost don't even care about AP as long as I'm in like the ballpark. And uh, this one is much much more severe. It's it's much more harsh about it. Yeah, in, in glitchless, it, pretty much every character needs to survive every fight. There's a tiny little bit of leeway, but not a whole lot. So, um, it's really important that we have characters survive where they need to. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, you you don't necessarily have the uh, ability in glitchless routes to make up that AP because uh, even though we now have level 5 death, experience is still unfortunately important for a while. Uh, yeah. It's not quite as... Um, it's not quite as uh, harsh, if you will, um, but we do need to have the appropriate characters at a multiple of two for later on, uh, which we'll talk about when we get there. Um, some other things to do uh, catch up on, you may have just saw on Rupon's stream and you would have seen it on Choco's stream as well. Uh, when we get back to Karnak, we do do a little bit of shopping. One nice thing that we pick up on this uh, final trip uh, of shopping in Karnak is that we get the life spell, so uh, eases the burden a little bit on the Phoenix Down problem of this game, particularly in Glitchless. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, uh, I can't remember if Curtis, if you mentioned uh, what jobs we got from the Fire Crystal, uh, at least this first <laughs> first batch of them. <laughs> I didn't mention them, but I, <laughs> I mentioned that we got them. Um, goodness, I can't even think of them right I, now. I'm I was trying to put you, you on the spot. I'm just, I'm just trying to check. <laughs> I'm exposed to the world for no. the ignoramus I am. Goodness. Hey, I don't know them offhand. I have it written down. So. <laughs> I was like, um, what do we get here? <laughs> I just wanted to check if we talked about it. Uh, but anyway. Oh, we, so. get a, we get um, Ninja, is that right? That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the I yeah. feel like that's the super important one for a little bit of a leveling that we're going to be doing here shortly. Yeah, that's right. So the three that we get initially, we do get Geomancer, which isn't super important, but actually does uh, get use, uh, at least in Team Mog and Team Choco's routes, uh, for one important fight. Uh, we also get Mediator, which, uh, you know, if we've seen, we've already uh, started to get some use of, and actually we'll still have further use later on. And then the last one, like we mentioned, is Ninja, which... Uh, for Team Mog and Team Choco, we're coming up to the area where it's going to start being uh, very important. Uh, the way that uh, a lot of FF5 routes, glitched or otherwise, actually, uh, they kind of go in phases. The first phase is sort of just, you know, uh, the early game, you're just using whatever abilities you have, like, you know, Thunder on uh, Carlobos. After that, we move into the rod breaking section where we're going to break <laughs> ice rods and fire rods. Um, but now we're moving into sort of the, uh, the early mid game phase and that's where ninjas are really going to come in handy and you'll, you'll see yeah. that pretty soon. Yeah. Ninjas, uh, with ninjas will uh, be throwing scrolls, which scrolls are dirt cheap compared to rods. Uh, and they do comparable damage, if not better. And also they will scale, uh, like Curtis and Toji mentioned earlier, they will scale with, um, the user's magic stat that we're going to bring over from them having learned, uh, you know, black magic command or dimension or things like that from a magic job. Um, right. So, yeah, we will be getting ample use out of the ninja job. So on Team Choco's screen, we're getting ready to uh, take to the seas, um, which I think is very interesting for step route because there is there's a step route in the water, um, but encounters kind of have their own counter depending on whether you're in a dungeon whether you're in the water whether you're on land so you kind of work with a slightly different counter here and there's portions of the world map where step count doesn't mm. advance so the um so the routes the runners are going to be taking are kind of like half in half out um using different areas of the world map to get just the right uh step count so that we don't have to see any encounters along the way 
Yeah, if you look on uh, Choco's stream, you may have seen he's sort of uh, inching his way at certain points. There is large, large portions of the ocean that are just no encounter zones. Um, you know, and the the initial sort of uh, your thought might be, oh, well, we just always want to be in those no encounter zones, right? It's like, well, to some extent, yes, but to some extent, no. You know, we need to make sure our steps are at a specific value and sometimes we may want to actually uh continue taking steps so uh you both sort of need to know where the zones are and need to know when you need to be in them so that varies route to route but uh you know visually speaking just looking at the game you wouldn't there's no way to know uh you kind of just have yeah. to know in advance uh, where those areas are there's been some magnificent routing done on this game uh, by various people. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's really quite impressive. Like there's a lot that goes into it, and to making sure that like the encounters that you're skipping and the route that you're taking is going to make you get the encounter that you want in various parts of the game. So a lot of work went into it. It's 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 really quite impressive to watch it being done and to know that a whole community kind of came together to create it. Yeah, big, big shout outs to uh, sort of the original guy that was uh, leading the routing scene for years was Chrono Kirby. Uh, he's not uh, around as much anymore, but uh, he definitely laid a lot of groundwork. And then uh, that was sort of picked up by uh, Zim Fogel, who really, especially with the any percent route, along with some Japanese runners like Asura, um, really put a lot of time and effort into uh, the routing scene in this game and you know if you're ever interested in picking up any category of this uh, there's a lot of resources out there due to them uh, and then finally we have to give a big shout out to team mog's own dark light boko who uh, basically routed this category from scratch for this yeah. marathon and that's the same route that ax odin is running as well so big uh, big props to him for doing that for the marathon and you know uh giving us yet another resource for another great category for this game. Yeah, it's always super cool to see people work on, you know, huge undertakings like this because Boko had to make a step route and, you know, and yeah. calculate stats and gill and it's it's just so it's it's a huge undertaking. So yeah, big 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 props. To him you may that. see here on a Team Tonberry's screen, surprise surprise. There's those two job crystals that went flying off. Do you do you know what they are though? Oh my goodness, what are they? Let me, I got it. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Look, I know that oh they're not goodness. samurai and not chemist. That's all Correct. that matters. They're not. They're not. They're also not that useful, but one of them does get used. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone in chat know what these two job crystals are? You can't looking? look it up, though. That's cheating. You can't look it up. You you have 30 seconds. Oh, there. Vaughn gets it immediately. Yes, they are oh, Bard yeah, and Hunter. Yeah. Uh, Hunter does not get used in this route. Uh, Bard does get used for some one uh, very important strat. Uh, and I can't recall if they use it. we use it in World 1 in this route or not, if one of you can remind me. I don't, don't think we do. So. It's just in World 3, right? Yeah. yeah. It, yes. At the, okay. at the very end game, it is going to get some use. Yeah. Hunter, unfortunately, is not very useful. Um, but yeah, we do. <laughs> now we finally have all the uh, the fire crystal jaws, and we know what they all are. So uh, we're we're good to go. And uh, one nice thing about the black chocobo that we got uh, is that besides you know coughing up some extra job crystals for us, uh, he can also fly. And over so we're mountains, gonna be flying no over to this forest and we'll be doing some hefty grinding here against these mini dragons. Uh, mini dragons give uh, a lot of experience. Oh this, yeah. It, 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 not even just comparable to other things at this point in the game, just in general yeah. in the whole game. They give a Watch lot of Watch these level up messages go by. Yeah. So this um, is two points of, of note here. Uh, first, we'll say this because it's uh, happening right now. This is actually, uh, in terms of early game, the major deviation between Team Mog and Team Choco's route and Team Tomberry's route. Um, now you're going to see Team Choco, uh, his sort of sequence of events here is he's going to kill uh, three mini dragon fights. He's then going to leave the forest uh, and encounter a um, black flame encounter, and then he's going to kill two more mini dragons. Uh, Rupon, on the other hand, isn't going to fight mini dragons at all. Um, he's going to elect to, fill, uh, to kill nine black uh black flame encounters and then he's going to menu and do a tenth one uh and then we're going to be learning another blue magic spell and that's sort of what the deviation for the other two runners are mm. 
Um, and that spell we're going to be learning is uh, Dark Shock, which, uh, again, more <laughs> get math. Get your protractors you know? out. Yep. Get, yep. Your, uh, get your calculators out, because it's math time. <laughs> Yeah, so what that one does is... Uh, so if you if you didn't sort of uh, realize what we might be doing, um, when we learned level 5 death uh, in the Ancient Library, as the name sort of uh, gives away, uh, what it does is it kills anyone instantly who is level is a multiple of 5. Um, Dark Shock uh, is a ability that you cast with a percentage to hit, and if it does hit, it will half someone's level so you can kind of see uh where this is going and i i guess just to spoil it since we're on the topic the last sort of piece of the math puzzle or <laughs> math abacus whatever you want to call the it variable uh, in algebra yeah the last variable uh is uh later on we're also going to be learning level two old um which uh if you hit someone with it it uh actually is it just make them I actually don't know exactly what that one does. I will I will explain exactly what age does after I say this very important thing, because okay. I see that the audio is still on Team Mogs. So it's very important to everybody to know the oh, Black yes. Chocobo has a specific tune to it, right? And this is like an RNG oh, yes. thing, you know? So at exactly the fifth measure, the beginning of it, there's a huh! that happens. Are we, are we, are we doing it or... Well, if we don't do it, it screws up the RNG, right? Yeah, it, sure. It we don't want to. We don't. Thing off. Right. We and Team Mog needs a little bit of our help, so uh, that's right. So if you're shout in outs chat, to Bick, who's big into this as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so if yeah. If you're in chat, get H U H ready, and it'll be about ten seconds. And Chobo will do a little dance, and then everybody type, huh. So I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, we are synced. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm unsure, but if not, we're synced at heart. <laughs> We're not. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was it. For me. That's okay. We got we got different timings. It's... <laughs> very nice. I'm very proud of you, chat. <laughs> this is yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Level two, uh, level two old, right? That's what happens when you turn thirty years old. You become level two old. Um, yeah, this is oh. the boomer commentary group, by the way. <laughs> What? So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. not a boomer yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, some of us are boomers, so. <laughs> so, uh, level two old does different things depending on whether it's applied to you or applied to the enemy. If it's applied to you, every turn you get, all of your stats, with the exception of your level, are taken down by one. Um, the difference being, if you apply it to the enemy, their level is included in that. So you can count the amount of time and the amount of turns that they're getting and es not even estimate, I mean, know exactly what their level is. So like you were saying earlier, you fit that variable into the uh, the algebra equation that is level five death and uh, dark shock. And uh, yes, dark yeah, shock, level two old and level shock, five yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And this is why it's called death by math, friends. That's yeah. right. And that, uh, that equation equals out to being a spicy meatball, is the technical term. About a 141 and two-thirds chance of success, I'd have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll see, we see on Rupon's stream, he's made his way back to the ancient library. His grinding is done. Choco's already past that, and we're on to the sandworm fight. Um, pretty <laughs> standard. We're just going to be throwing... Uh, uh, this route is Thunder Scrolls, correct? It's not uh, Water Scrolls. I water, scrolls. water Scrolls, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, so yeah we can't afford throw... Shurikens and Glitchless, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, one strat you might see here is throwing Shurikens at the Worm, which uh, would not trigger these Demi counters from the holes, but since we can't afford those, we have to use Water Scrolls, uh, which are significantly cheaper, but the holes will cast Demi, and it kind of likes to waddle its way over to the party. Mm. Um and the worm's gonna die right here. Like, why is it? Why are they casting Demi? Just, just, just <laughs> let it happen. When we get to uh, the sandworm fight on Team Mog screen, I will once again bring up that that is the second best sound effect in the game. It just <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> that reenactment of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it on tap. I can do it anytime. I'm ready. I got it ready to go. Marketable skill. <laughs> So on Team Mog stream, he is a bit behind. So you can kind of see what's happening on his stream there. Um, 
this is the last area where not being on step route is uh, pretty costly. Um, the mini dragon encounters themselves are rare encounters. He's actually getting quite lucky, which is very fortunate. Um, and he needs five of them. So um, a lot of the times you may see him do some save and resets. I'm not sure how he's going to elect to go about it, but um, finding these encounters off step can be a little bit annoying, but I believe he's at two out of five right now. So not too bad at all. Hopefully he can continue with a sort of similar rate that he's going at now. Um, when you're looking for these mini dragons, you're going to routinely encounter Ramu. Um, and not only can we not kill him, uh, he can, if he gets a turn off, he just quickly takes out one of your party members and you don't want that. So you, you hope that you run away, uh, as quick as possible. He's got escape, so not too bad. He should be fine. Yeah. So, um, you also see him pausing at the, um, start of every encounter. You saw that back in the steamship, but here it's especially really important because, uh, if you oh, get a mini dragon goes. encounter <sighs> and you don't realize it, uh, mini dragons will instantly kill your party. If they get a turn, they'll cast like Blizzard or yeah. Bliz like mm -hmm. Blizzaga all on the whole party and you're just dead. Um, a reset there from Team Mog. Yeah. Yeah, save and reset is pretty common here. Um, one strat that people will do off step is uh, anytime they encounter. Well, there you go. You can see the benefits. Anytime you encounter uh, an enemy that's not mini dragons, you will save and reset because often. Um, you know, when you reload the game, uh, it's not uncommon for the seed to start with the rare encounter. Um, so it's, it's you know, you can with some regularity get a mini dragons encounter immediately after reloading. So that's what he got there. And so he's at three out of five, which is not bad at all. He's just going to set up his characters for the black flame encounter to learn dark shock and then two more before he can go home free. And then, like we alluded to, after this, um, although he will lose time from not being on step count, it's not. This is the last really, you know, major time sink to not having step count. Yeah, and, and saving in this game is almost instantaneous. It's incredibly yeah, it's really fast. fast. It also doesn't take a whole lot of time to reset compared to other games, too. Like a, yeah, for FF6, for example, you have to watch a bit of the opening cutscene before you can actually load your save. This game, you just mash A and you're good to go. Yeah, that's another thing that makes playing this game both casually and as a speedrun just a pleasure is how smooth everything is. Yeah. And, uh, looks like we got early Dark Shock for Team Mog. Good stuff, not having to wait a lot here or, or did it hit ferris I yeah it hit it hit lena unfortunately that oh, that's sort of the well, unlucky thing count. yeah they like he, he, presumably this encounter still needs uh ap on lena um and also you need to be able to kill the encounter so uh in this case you only have a 50 percent chance for them to you know hit it on one of the blue mages because otherwise it doesn't uh it doesn't count but he did you know got it, get it there so no problem at all so on the other, uh, the other two racers, uh, Team Choco and Team Tonberry, we're getting to, um, I would say all of the game up to this point is kind of like little Scooby-Doo episodes of like, mm. we're going to go to this tower and get these jobs. We're going to go find this crystal and get these jobs. We're kind of just chasing the crystals as we go along. And I would say we're now getting to the point where the plot kind of starts to take off and deviate a little bit. Um, we finally have seemingly caught up with Lena's father, right? The King Tycoon. So we've been kind of in his footsteps up to this point in the game. And uh, when we get to these ruins, he's very evasive. We see him kind of like ducking around corners and like playing hide and seek with us, just being like a real goofball. Um, and kind of leading us into these ruins where we find this airship buried under the ground, right? Um, which also, if, uh, if you all remember before we um, got to the Isle of Crescent, our ship was sucked into a whirlpool. And we find it down here as well. Um, so things start to come together here. Sid and Mid meet us down here. They're sucked into the ground uh, and start fixing this airship for us. And, and some things start to coalesce for us, start to kind of come together. We learn maybe where the King Tycoon is going. We learn a little bit about the history of the game and uh, of maybe like the meteorites aren't just meteorites. So there's a little bit of intrigue at this point. Yeah, and the big sort of plot point that uh, we didn't actually get a chance to mention, but um, when you do make that return to Karnak um, and you meet up with Sid and Mid, uh, they actually tell you um, that 
So every time we go to one of the shrines, you know, we see these crystals exploding. Uh, the reason for that is that years ago, um, Sid tells us that an evil power named X-Death was actually sealed away uh, using the power of the crystals. And so now he's trying to escape and that's why the crystals are shattering and he's uh, possessing others to do that for him. And so, you know, that's sort of the big plot point of our, of our journey right now. I figure X death is kind of like an X potion. It's just like extra death. It's a <laughs> lot more death than normal. Uh, by the way, this is a boss. Um, yeah. Was mm -hmm. a boss. Yep. Bo yep. Was mm -hmm. a boss. Uh, that's great. He's he just yeah, dies. he's basically the malt of uh, Carlabos earlier in the run. Uh, and we're actually a lot stronger now. So instead of just casting measly little bolt ones, uh, we just chuck two Thunder Scrolls at him. And, you know, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> He drops like an ice bow, which at least in any percent uh, you don't want to take. It kind of messes up your menus a little bit later. Um, might have taken it here for money, but it, nothing notable. <laughs> and we look over at Mog Stream. He is officially done the grind section, um, and you know, like we said, uh, now he's he's not going to be nearly as inconvenienced uh, being off step count. Yeah. Uh, from this point forward, so very, very good to see. And uh, Ooh. we're also gonna get those good dimmy sounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We didn't get to hear them yet, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's quality. It's quality all the way. It's a great game. This is the first game I ever speed ran. It's so good. We don't have to be quiet for it, though. It's, <laughs> it no, no, you've, hi you've hyped it up oh. too much. We've got to be quiet for it. <laughs> I also like the little sound effect from uh, <laughs> the, the sandworm coming underneath. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just going to chuck the first uh, water scroll, and then we're going to hear the best sound effect in the entire game. Ooh. Woo. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. One more, one more. Beautiful. <laughs> Every time. Oh, Glorious. I'm s excuse me, there's even more. <laughs> and there we go, sandworm down. So, you see on Team Choco and Team Tonberry screen, they're doing what uh, the community sort of affectionately refer to as the airship sequence. We're kind of just flying around, visiting various places. Um, Choco's sort of at the tail end of it. We're returning uh, back to the... Uh, uh, someone save me. The Meteors? Tycoon, the tycoon Wait, Meteorite? Tycoon, thank you. Tycoon yeah. Meteor. You yep. got me with the jobs, I got you with That's the Meteor. Right. <laughs> exactly. You gotta have the payback, right? <laughs> Yeah, we're returning to the Tycoon Meteor, and uh, we're going to be fighting another boss here. An actual boss, <laughs> if yeah, anything. Right. And actually, I think this is the first major time we're going to be using, uh, finally using our math skills. Uh, we're breaking up the Abacus to uh, beat a giant rock. And uh, you'll see why it's so useful, uh, especially in a glitchless route where we can't, uh, you know, we don't have infinite money at our disposal to get good items and equipment. Uh, I have to interrupt you and say it's not just a rock. Um, this is Timmy. Oh, 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 oh I, I, I'm sorry. Put some, excuse you me. You know, give him some respect. Put, put some respect <laughs> on the name, you know. Yeah, geez. So this is Timmy. <laughs> um, he yeah, looks yeah. really That's hard, Timmy. and he's really fast. He looks like he's slow, but he's actually very fast. Looks are deceiving. Um, you don't judge a book by its cover in FF5. Exactly, Ooh. but you do judge him by what his level is, and his mul yes. level is multiple of five. Yeah, so I, unfortunately for him, yeah. Unlucky. Yeah, sometimes we need to. Uh, sometimes we need to do algebra to force their level to be a multiple five, and sometimes, uh, you know, they just are. And this is one of those cases where we just need to cat, uh, cast level five depth, and that's pretty much it. Now, with a uh, with level two old, when we get that, because that changes their level over time, I think that will actually be calculus. Oh, true. Yeah, <laughs> we're finding yeah. we're finding the limit on their uh, on their level, you know. That's that's right, oh, right? No. Hey, man, I took Traumatized. calculus in, in university. <laughs> I... Oh boy, I took pre-calc in high school, and I was like, yeah, you know what? 
I think I'm, think I'm good. <laughs> hey, man, I, I had yeah, to take it. Here we are. Hey, you have to take it for computer science. Ask me how much I've used calculus in my job. Ask me. <laughs> how much have you used calculus in your job? Uh, less than I've used it in FF5. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is what Leibniz invented it for, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> what I th I thought I was, uh, you know, learning calculus to advance my career, but in fact, I was just setting myself up to be a prolific FF5 speedrunner. <laughs> yeah, you kind of got trolled a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I got trolled out of a thousand dollar class. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you, you want to be good at education, man. You. Yeah, true. <laughs> Shout outs to student loans. <laughs> Helping me with my FF5 career. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so on Team Choco's uh stream right now, the um uh, the reason we went to the Tycoon Meteorite was to get the Adamantite. And uh Sid has now used that to reinforce the airship. And that allows us to go higher up into the atmosphere, into the floating fortress that emerged from the ground. Where we have reason to believe the, uh, the fourth and final crystal is. Yeah, and um, so the way we kind of get in here is there's four guns, two on each side of this thing. And we're going to just sort of quickly dispose of them with Thunder Scrolls. Um, and then once we've disposed of these four guns, um, we can fight the main cannon, which is called Soul Cannon. Um, and these, uh, these guns on the sides are actually, they drop, uh, they can drop speed drinks and another kind of drink. I don't remember what it, I don't remember what the other drink is. Um, protectonics. Um, so the drops here are actually reasonably useful. Um, yeah. I think we might use a speed drink, but I think we'll sell the rest. So it's, you know, a nice bit of money here. They're not too bad. They don't, they don't really do anything. And then, uh... We'll be coming up on Soul Cannon, which is the, definitely the most difficult and hard boss in the whole <laughs> Se run. Second only to Cray Claw. Yeah, I was going to say second only to Cray Claw, <laughs> and it's just insane <laughs> difficulty. Um, so all you know, the guns are taken out. And there's a and thing uh, that we didn't mention earlier. Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'll do it real fast. No, no, go ahead, um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think we mentioned at the very, very outset of the game that Galoof is an amnesiac. He doesn't remember where he's from or anything like that. And um, as the game has gone on, I think twice now, we've seen small scenes of him beginning to remember mm. where he's from and what his deal is, right? Um, he's remembered at this point that he has a granddaughter. Um, and we see her in one scene. We kind of like... Um, uh, we see what she looks like so that we'll recognize her when she uh, appears on the screen. Um, and I think at this point he has admitted that he's not even from our world, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we now know about the existence of these like alternate dimensions and other worlds and things. Ooh, <laughs> spooky. Yeah, this is Soul Cannon. Um, super interactive fight. You just hold A. That's pretty difficult, man. Yeah. That's like pre-calculus level. level. <laughs> oh, wow. Was, I've never been so hurt in my life. Uh, That's okay. I'm sure you'll get me back at some point. <laughs> I do like oh, the messages. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, he, he like charges a cannon and stuff, and then no, he's dead. Um, <laughs> I believe you can kill him in... I think normally it's eight scrolls to kill him, but sometimes you get really lucky with damage rolls, you can kill him in seven. Oh, I, I didn't think know it's that. I think it's eight and nine, but eight yeah, and nine. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's nine is like the base level, but I, I believe, uh, I assume it's possible in this trap, but you can kill an eight if you get good damage rolls. So, yeah. So now we're in the Lanka ruins, um, which, uh, before we get to it, I'll just say that the boss of this area, I think, mm. is one of to me. Maybe you'll disagree, but I think the funnest part of both of these routes because these routes are like very different and they kind of showcase how you can really pull some I would say high level trickery off mm. to be able to get through otherwise unwinnable fights. Yeah I, yeah, I would say it's for sure the most technical fight uh, in the speed run just in general. Now this this route does you know a different strat um, then I've seen, you know, I've seen people in chat talking about sap strats. Uh, that is an any percent strat. This one is, is different, um, but sort of the 
under the hood technical side of this boss is really interesting um yeah. and you kind of have to know what you're doing otherwise it's very difficult even in a speed run yes absolutely and we're getting some shurikens a bunch of items there yeah, this is also, fortunately enough, uh, a lot of these runes are skipped in 80%, but there is a lot of goodie runes um, for the glitchless routes to pick up extra items. Uh, you know, you see a shuriken, and I think we use that uh, pretty much right away. Um, extra money equipments, you know, we get a cabin. I think we get a high potion at one point. So really some nice stuff uh, for when we don't have, you know, infinite money. I, uh, I saw a good question in chat um, about a... Uh... A piece of FF5 uh, speedrun tech. Which voice is mythic? Well, you see, that 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 kind of question is really hard to answer because I am not one voice. I am. I was gonna make like an Ultimicia joke here, and then I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. Uh, time compression. Yes, <laughs> your that, brain got my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to be. I I didn't personally want to be mistaken with a such a prolific member of the community. <laughs> oh, you just trying to butter me up. What do you want? Do you want me to buy you a Ferrari? <laughs> no, I just, I just some that. chicken nuggets. Just the BTS oh. meal. <laughs> I mean a standard ten piece nugget meal. <laughs> <laughs> I ran to the BTS Twitter meal. Really oh, All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, Team Choco, like we said, coming up to a really technical boss. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it uh, as he's doing it, and then you can watch it again on Rupon's stream. Um, the reason why this fight is complicated, and there's really no way to see this just by watching, um, but there's basically like five dragons in one for this boss. Um, and every time you beat one of them, it changes. So each of the five dragons has 1600 HP. Um, and you can't do excess damage. So, you know, that's we need to get to the fifth phase. And so in theory, that's uh, 6,400 damage. But, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle room because we can't over damage. So we need to kill the first four phases. And then conveniently enough, the levels change every time. So phase one is level 21. Phase two is 19, followed by 23, 24. And then math nerds rejoice phase five is level 20 so you know what that means we're going to use level five death so we just need to get there um and like i said you can't really see when the phases are changing uh one thing you might note um we do have two geomancers uh the first time they cast their terrain ability uh it did a lot of damage that's because phase one is weak to win so it does a lot and then the following two times um it's not significant so it's possible this didn't happen but uh, the phases get increasingly more magic defense, so uh, in theory, the third cast does less than the second, but you know, it's it's pretty close. So that's one way to sort of see. Um, but yeah, once we finally deplete those first four phases, we get use level 5 death and just finish it off like that. Team Mog now has the Adamantite. They're heading back to get their airship upgrades. And it does look like, uh, despite doing different routes, uh, Tonberry's uh, route actually seems to be pretty much the same. Uh, he's using two Geomancers uh, for the wind damage, uh, and then the remaining two characters are throwing. Um, I think, what do we throw? We throw, we pick up the Shuriken, so we throw that. Uh, Bartz is breaking uh, Thunder Rods, um, and we're also throwing Thunder Scrolls as well. So yeah, this is sort of the culmination of all the types of strats we've done. We're using both. The, I think this is probably one of the last sections we actually use Thunder Rods uh, primarily. Um, yeah. And then yeah. uh, we're using Ninja as well. I think we still have a few remaining later on. I might be mistaken, but, uh, but we'll yeah. We'll be getting uh, a very special job after this next crystal that is going to uh, do some heavy lifting. Jobs. Mm, that's, that's right. True. That's true. Yin and Yang. Dark and light. Can't have one without the other. This is actually a very pivotal point, uh, story-wise, too. If you can see the new character on screen, uh, as I believe Curtis alluded to, this is Gluff's granddaughter, Kara, um, the fifth playable character in the game. Uh, we'll get her later on. Uh, no spoilers, though, <laughs> of why that happens. Uh, but seeing her actually cures Gluff's amnesia... Um, and uh, we also see King Tycoon here. 
I also like uh, when Galoof's amnesia is cured, it is shown as a question mark bubble above his head that he <laughs> throws to the side. He's like, get out of here with that. <laughs> And actually, I forget. Uh, has it been revealed that Ferris and uh, and uh, Lena are sisters at this point, or is this, this the, scene, the moment? Yeah. yeah. So we scene. do we do also learn here because they both recognize King Tycoon as their father. So uh, not only is Ferris a woman, she's actually uh, she's actually Lena's sister as well. Who knew? Yep. Fun fact. Um, actually, uh, way back at Siren, um, when they have the hallucinations. Ferris and Lena both mm -hmm. see King Tycoon. That's like right. They're standing yeah. next to each other and they both see King Tycoon. So if you're paying close attention, there's a little bit of, you know, allusion to it there. And, uh, we've got Team Mog coming up on, you know, Soul Cannon. Very difficult boss. He'll get through it. Uh, but because all four crystals are now broken, X Death has returned to this world. Uh, and he does a doozy on our party. Mog is on the soul cannon. Yeah, this boss casually actually can kind of can kind of make you work for it a bit. Um, if you don't have access to high power thunder spells, I believe he has quite high defense. Um, and then the the cannon charging once you get hit by it, it uh it hits quite hard. So casually, soul cannon is you know no pushover. Yeah, it's kind of ironic, really, because, you know, this is a glitchless speedrun. We're really just using mechanics that anyone could do. And even though if it's uh, even if when it's a uh, difficult casually, uh, it really doesn't even seem like a boss fight when you're doing a strat like this. Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, uh, you know, we've had this big reunion. We know Ferris and Lena are sisters. They found their father. But X death being free. Uh, King Tycoon actually sacrifices himself to save our party, and uh, unfortunately, we have lost him as well. But we do get some fancy new job crystals, which Curtis is going to tell us all about. Okay, watch this. I actually know, right, well, uh, I think I only know two of them. No, hold on, I'm going to get it. All right, all right. Off the top of my head. So, boom, the Spammer Eye and boom. the Chemist. So that's going to be, mwah, those, are, those are the chef's kiss jobs, right? Love him. Dancer? <laughs> you have to sound so surprised. No, I, I, I think it's Dancer. Dancer's one That's of them. That's right. Oh, I thought you were it just, they actually just popped up on screen on Team Show. <laughs> I, I literally <laughs> just, you could have just read them. And then was like <laughs> looking into the air. <laughs> I was doing like a thinking pose as though everybody uh, okay. could see me doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, true, true. So you're just uh, preparing for uh, in-person marathons again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, and I, I don't know, some other job. <laughs> some <laughs> yeah, inconsequential yeah, dan job. Dancer, dancer and Dragoon. Dragoon does Dragoon. actually have one use in this in this route, I believe. Oh, I that's believe. right. You're right. It Which wasn't why this category it wasn't is cool. That's right. That's right. Now, in uh, in the glitched version of the speedrun, Dragoon's use is to confuse me with Ninja a lot, and then I accidentally mm -hmm. equip it, and then I, I mm -hmm. die. Oh. So, that's, nice. That's what it's useful for. Hmm. That doesn't sound uh, very useful. I mean, I mean, you know, I guess it depends on what you're aiming for. True. I mean, <laughs> oh darn, my run died. Guess I'll stream again next time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, do we use dancer in glitchless? I don't believe so. I know that uh, there, sometimes um, it's kind of an interesting thing. You will use um, classes not because. Uh, they're inherently useful, but they have better base stats. Uh, so yeah. Dancer, I believe, is very fast. So uh, I have seen uh, some routes where you'll use Dancer just purely for the speed advantage. So uh, sometimes yeah, that, uh, that and, thing can uh, be useful. What they can equip. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, that's because right. the Dancer because our... is the only job except for the Freelancer, I believe, that can equip the Ribbon. If I'm not, that's right. I'm that's not right. right. Might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There might be one other, but I can't recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes there. I, I think we we mentioned it before, but uh, um, if you have been watching the menus, you'll see a lot of things like 
Oh, why are they equipping uh, the black magic ability? They're not using black magic. Um, sometimes things aren't actually for what their, uh, you know, obvious use are. You know, in that case, uh, black magic actually makes us do more damage with uh, ninja throws. Uh, who knew, right? It re- increases your magic <laughs> stat, and that increases Big your throwing sense. damage. Yeah, so a lot of times it's even just things like that. So we're on our last uh, last go at Arcuavis on Team Mogstream. Uh, again, same thing. So maybe we can, with all we've talked about, you'll see the Geomancers. They're going to use Gale Cut, and it does a lot of damage. You know, I was going to see 1,100, I think uh, 1,300, yep. Um, we're going to be using the remaining uh, rods, Fire Rod, and some Ninja Throws. And then you'll notice we've actually already phased him. Uh, I think twice, or actually, I think this is the second time we phase him because there is damage overlap. So you'll notice when they use terrain the second time, it actually does less than half damage, basically. And then again, so just under 500, just under 600, um, he's still gaining magic defense. The next time they use it, they'll probably do less damage. It can be about the same because it's not super significant, but there are little tricks that you can see um, that sort of indicate when the phasing is happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, this time she did 396, and this time 539. So yeah, it actually did quite a bit less, about 60 damage less in Lena's case, for example. So um, yeah, a lot is going under the hood in this fight. And then fortunately, once we get to this phase, it is just a simple level 5 death to finish it off. What life force? (laughs) Something I'll point out really quick um, while we're kind of like doing some plot and kind of seeing the uh, Arcavis fight again. Um, just like a little piece of like random trivia, right? So the, uh, the sprite artist in this game is the same sprite artist that had been with Square since uh, Final Fantasy 1. And this is the thing I like to uh, point out a lot of times because I love the battle sprites in this game. Like they are so good. And like really out, of all the, yeah, out of all the playable characters, there's 25 different jobs. So there's 125 mm. different battle sprites that all have their own animations and are all independent. And the, uh, the original artist was Kazuko Shibuya. And she was with the team from the very beginning. And I remember uh, in that book that I read about the release of this game, they interviewed her for that. And she was like, yeah, it took forever. Like, I could only use so many colors, but had to, like, <laughs> make 125 different characters look entirely different from each other, which is, like, very, very impressive. So, like, her work on these games is, like, I, I feel like a lot of times, um, like, Kitase and Sakaguchi and Uematsu get, like, a lot of credit, but sometimes she doesn't get as much credit as they do. But, like, Mm. she put a lot of the style into these games and a lot of, like, the reasons that I remember them from when I was younger and, like, did a fantastic job with this one. Absolutely. she She did an incredible job. Did she do the sprites for enemies as well? Uh, I think the enemies were... They were at least designed by somebody else. I don't know that she did the enemy sprites. Okay. Sort of on a similar note, actually, um... And, you know, maybe even sort of thinking back on it, uh, you know, in hindsight, uh, it does make sense when you consider uh, the, you know, in particular, the graphical difference between FF5 and FF6. Um, yeah. FF5 is actually the uh, the last Final Fantasy installment to be directed by the original director, which who you mentioned was Sakaguchi. Um, so he directed FF1 all the way through FF5, but did not direct FF6. So um, pretty interesting to see. Uh, such a drastic switch between FF5 and FF6, you know, new director and all. So pretty cool yeah, that, yeah. you know, so many talented people worked on the franchise for such a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, I I've, I think we neglected to mention, uh, so Team Choco's route actually elects to go back to Karnak uh, for some additional shopping and menuing, whereas Rupon's route doesn't. So now they are both basically finishing the Pearl Burrows fight at almost the same time. So Team Choco and Team Tomberry are actually, you know, within seconds of each other right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am seeing in chat, it looks like a couple people have said that uh, Tetsuya Nomura actually did the uh, the monster designs for this game. I don't know that he did oh, wow. the sprite work, but uh, yeah, he actually did the monster designs. I did not know that. That is great. I wonder if Rupan will go and shop somewhere else. Um, do a large shop it's, somewhere else. Mm, yeah, it's very interesting to see. I, I think uh, it looks like Choco did an extra menu. So Rupan is... I mean, it's hard. It's kind of hard to call, but like in terms of story progression, he's actually in the lead now. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see the lead change uh, back and forth like this. He's going to get yeah. to the boss much quicker here. 
Mm-hmm. And actually, I, I think we, we neglected to mention it, but you, you, you would have seen it on Pearl Burrows, and you're going to see it here as well. Um, we're busting out the samurai jobs that we just got, and this is sort of uh, the the next big phase of uh, strategy for the uh, the speedrun. And, and in, in a way, this strat actually kind of follows all the way to the end, which is yeah. Gil Toss. And Gil Toss is exactly what sounds like we're using our money to deal lots of damage and you know it's it's basically the the highest damage thing that we can be doing at this point also of note if you recall all the way back at ancient library in the team choco and team mog route they actually caught the uh the uh page 64 and we just released it right there and you know it did a, a cool thousand damage to uh to the boss so not too shabby yeah no, uh, boss, uh, is a very broken ability. Um, it does yes. cost money to use, but it scales off of your level. Um, so later on, we'll be using some things to boost our characters' levels, mm, and then that's right, yeah. throw money. And uh, it just it deals obscene amounts of damage. Like Jeff Bezos, sponsor FFI, please. <laughs> Rupon doing a very quick menu. I think that was uh, the menu he was behind, but he is, even after that, still slightly ahead heading into Titan. And we're actually going to see uh, they both have the same setup. We're actually going to use our one and only but very important use of Dragoon. Uh, we're going to make sure that we jump with Lena, who is our Dragoon, just before we deal the finishing blow to Titan because he does Earthshaker, which is untankable with our current levels and HP. And uh, because she's in the air, we actually finished the fight uh, no problem, despite the fact that the other two are killed off. There yeah, are sort of uh, other route. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, in any percent, you would get a hero drink from mm-hmm. uh, Archeo Avis, and then you would use that to double a character's HP, uh, Bart's HP, I believe, in any percent. And then he would actually have enough HP to tank mm-hmm. it and get some yep. AP on the chemist roll, too. But uh, don't have that luxury here, so we just just jump over it. Yeah, and this was the other where we were talking about we were unsure if uh, Bard was being used. You, that is technically another way to do it. Uh, Bard has a hide ability, which uh, basically functions similar to jump. You know, it takes you off the battlefield. Difference being, it doesn't do damage, but you do get to choose uh, for how long you're hidden. So you could do the same thing using that strat as well. Yeah, but in any case... Bard AP as well, so... Yep, yep. Yeah, we, we are moving on to the second yes. portion of this game. This game actually has three worlds, and Team Choco and Team Tonberry have just finished World 1 almost exactly in sync. <laughs> Frames yeah. away. Incredible. It looks like Team Choco is ahead by m- literally frames, so we are in for an exciting start to World 2. Both are still on step count. They're doing different routes, but uh, you know this is, uh, this is very cool to see you know, yeah. 60 hours into a marathon. And, and speaking of which, uh, Team uh, Mog is getting ready to start the uh, the meteorite hunt uh, portion of the game, which isn't very far behind. And like we've said multiple times, like FF five is wild. <laughs> like things can get real crazy. So like being that close really does mean like it, it is only one accidental step away. You know, yeah, either team is only one accidental step on step route away from Mog being in the lead again. Hmm. Oh, and um, Tonberry does his tent menu slightly faster, and now he's in the lead. Unbelievable <laughs> gameplay going on right here, friends. Yeah, fun menus fact about this are where these games on. live and die. Yeah, Sorry, fun go ahead. fact about this island that you spawn on, um, if you fight random encounters here, they all drop tents. It's kind of like the... And yes. there's no way <laughs> off the island. So you're... The game expects you to fight a few encounters and then have to rest up using a tent, and then this happens. And... Um, Bart's is really Bart's is gonna give it his best try here. Um, I I really hope Bart's can pull through here. Um, let, let's see what happens, shall we? Hopefully we have a good job on him for this one v one fight. Oh, we're we're uh, we are the samurai, so no problem at all. Oh, why uh, did he do oh, that? Oh, uh oh. Oh, well, well, well. No, well, <sighs> off to jail with you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually kill that abductor by doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Um. But it's actually slower because you get like a he like drops a chest and then it like spews out some smoke and then knocks you out and then he takes you away anyway. You do get one AP from it if you do kill it, but it's just way faster to just um, have Bar- Bart's knife himself. Um, and yeah, we get taken to jail. Yay. 
<laughs> they haven't been here before. Unfortunately, Sid is not here to blow up the adjacent wall, so uh, we're going <laughs> to need right, to find right. another way out of here. Um, I will give the uh, approximately five-minute warning until bangers begin, by the way. Until it's... Well, I guess if I won't see it on a... Who, whose music is it right now? Team Choco's? Team Choco has yeah, the music? Team Choco. Oh, so I would say we're about... He, he's, prepa- he's prepared. <laughs> I would say we're, we're about five minutes away from absolute jam time. So Unfortunately... Just, just get ready. Well, Fortunately and unfortunately, Team Choco and Team Tombri are so close to one another. Uh, we're probably only <laughs> right. going to get to hear the music twice instead of three times. So, or, or well, we four times boat. because or there's one overlap. More. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Well, like, I can think of a battle on a big boat that goes down a little bit later True. as well. True. Assuming one of them's going to pull ahead, though. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, as you can see, plot and cutscenes here. Yeah, as you can see, uh, Galuf has not gotten arrested, so uh, he's doing what any good friend would do by uh, boarding a dragon and coming to our rescue. Yeah, my friends don't do that for me. Honestly, I'm 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 a little bit jealous right now. I'm not I think you lie. need to. Uh, I I would do it. Evaluate. You. Yeah, evaluate who your friends are. I know. Also, duly noted, this is Xdeath Castle. Not much security. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got like some bears walking around basically, and that's about it. <laughs> he and that, he do have that some chest, bears. that chest just has all their items in it. It's kind of just sitting out in the open. <laughs> well, I think the I thing mean, is, he has the world's most powerful warrior in his castle. Right? You know what, you know, yeah. dude? You know, you know what can topple the world's most powerful warrior? The arrogance to not put up some defenses. You know. Mm-hmm. True. That's, that's, that's wisdom. That's wise. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, we're going to have to fight the world's most, uh, you know, prolific warrior. And I think we're going to see it on Tonberry's screen first. So this is the great Gilgamesh. 1v1 oh, versus Greg. Galoof. And, uh, oh, we beat him. Oh, well. Uh, oh. You know, uh, off day. Off day. Yeah. Yeah, you maybe. know, he, he wasn't ready. This the fight is scary, though. Maybe, no, maybe he's, more, maybe he's more ready on Choco stream. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he exactly. was kind of, he was on his break. It was kind right. of a cheap shot, you know? Not look, look, guys. he was on his break. He didn't get a lot of sleep. The sun was in his eyes. True. He had, like, like a weird hair growing out of his ear that was bothering him that day. Not fair. Yeah. Not fair fight. Yeah. Or, well, it's lucky for us, because he, because of all that, he is going to let us go. So we're safe for now. Lucky us. Also, this is my favorite sprite in the whole game, by the way. You just saw it on Tom Bray's stream. You're about to see that choke was again. It took me a while oh, yeah. to realize what was happening, but I think it's supposed to be Bart's, like, crawling underneath the bars of this, yes. of this shell. It looks so ridiculous, though. And, yeah, like, you're again? sprinting while you do it. Yeah, yeah. right here. <laughs> and, and Bart's will go back to being on screen until you open the menu again. All right, chat. If there's ever a time to post a sour please... Oh my in goodness. the chat room. Or a rat jam. Or, or a rat, rat jam, jam, or cat jam, or the little cat to our ASCII. Now is the time. Try to limit the conversation so you can enjoy this, but right there, we're just going to do a simple... Uh, Simply take out the encounter, but you'll notice that Rupon switched over to the right side of the bridge. That's to actually skip encounters, so uh, we would have had to fight more of them otherwise. Other than that, we are setting up for our second bout with the world's most dangerous swordsman, <laughs> and this is actually a more formidable fight to his credit. Yeah, he actually genuinely is like a little bit of a danger. Yeah, he actually does a lot of damage, and but Rupon is very prepared. As you can see, he's got four samurais packed with money, ready to throw, but he, he does have to keep them. He does have to keep them healthy, though. So as you'll yes. see, especially when the phase changes, Ooh. he can do a lot of damage. I think that 3-4-3 three, three we just saw is the the magic number. Like, that's mm. the most he can do. If I Yeah, recall. 343 is a jump, I believe. You'll notice that before that last kill toss, Rupon let everyone's ATBs uh, go to full because he knows that He's uh, yeah, he's gonna do a lot of damage there, but he wants to finish off Gilgamesh immediately after this, knowing that someone's gonna get killed. But in the transition between phase one and phase two, 
It's going to use that time while uh, Gilgamesh just, I don't know, blabbers, but whatever, you know. <laughs> whatever he's talking about. Uh, he's going to do some item management here. And you'll see uh, Team Choke will probably do the same as well. And then he remembers some urgent business and uh, he has yes. to go. Not he lets us fault. go again. Not no, he lets fault. us go. He lets us go. Anyway, back to posting the uh, ASCII in chat. So. Oh, and one final piece of information you'll see. You'll see on Rupon stream first, he's going to do a little snake zigzag. He's going to stick to the left all the way to the second tower, do a little snake zigzag, and he skips all the encounters, and that is the end of the big bridge. Yeah, um, something we actually didn't mention earlier is uh, a mechanic in this game called event tiles. And what event tiles are, it's basically a tile on the in the game that tr is supposed to trigger an event, um, whether that be a cutscene or a battle or things like that. And the big bridge is notorious for just being riddled with event tiles everywhere. Yeah. Most of them trigger battles, which we do very specific movement to skip. Um, and so a lot of these event tiles... Um, are are factored into our movements with step route whether we deliberately walk over them to um uh what i didn't mention is that uh event tiles do not advance the step counter um right so right. uh sometimes we'll deliberately walk over them to you know save a step or sometimes we'll deliberately avoid them to not eat one of our steps and yeah big right. bridge is riddled with them the whole game is but yeah big bridge is it, notorious it... It's also interesting how they can be used, too, because walking over an event tile removes one step, right? So, like, if you imagine there's an event tile in front of you and a tile in front of that one that is not an event tile, you basically get one step free. But when you make mistakes in dungeons on steps, it's really in twos because you step accidentally to the right. Oh, now you need to do one back to the left. So it's very hard to fix... Um, mistakes around event tiles unless you use that very event tile to correct yourself um, yeah absolutely so that, yeah so it, it really takes kind of like an understanding of how the stepping in this game works if you do make a mistake um, and a lot of that has to do with those event tiles yeah and uh we'll, we'll be seeing a lot of um we'll, we'll definitely be seeing a lot more of them um they all they, they do exist on the world map as well um in we're particular, getting ready to see yeah, the we're actually about to pass the uh, we're going through basically the no encounter zone here. Um, yep. So this is sort of left over from World One, where there was a no encounter zone on basically the same plane as yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, they're the same areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can't get encounters, and so uh, you want to take specific amounts of steps in and out of the no encounter zone to make sure your manipulations are work are working correctly. Uh, Team Mog is now in World 2 as well, all in the same universe at this point. Mm -hmm. And we're introduced to the Moogles! So, T Team Mog represent right here. Best characters? Uh, um, but yeah, one of them tries to run away from us, and then very unfortunately falls into a shaft, or a, a large hole in the earth. And being the good Samaritans we are, we do have to go save the Moogle. Um, so <laughs> right. this is the Underground River. Uh, we basically have to float through this water here, and so uh, there's just no way to possibly avoid encounters here, so you just kind of yeah. take them, and g you get what you get. Um, there we'll is a good amount of money. Yeah. yeah. 4,400 kill, it's quite a lot, especially in Glitchless, where we don't have the ability to, you know, get tons of money by duping items, so. Right. A very helpful gill. Uh, I, we actually won't be killing it here, anything here in Glitchless, though. Um, any percent would elect to kill a couple of the encounters just for some experience. I don't think we'll be killing anything here, though. Um, right. We will be getting up to uh, the classic Final Fantasy staple of having a yes. boss that can be killed with a phoenix down. Yes. Which is and, and actually it... not insignificant in Glitchless, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. We've kind of mentioned that phoenix downs are expensive. Unfortunately... It is not guaranteed, and no. this is probably why Rupon has elected to go for a safer strat uh, by using an elixir, and he'll probably use a potion as well. Yeah, so an elixir basically is guaranteed to hit, but it doesn't kill. It just brings it down to one HP, and then he uses a potion to finish it off. Axon, I believe, got first try, or yep. second try, Phoenix down, or first... Mm -hmm. I believe it was first try. I saw yeah. two ATBs lower, oh, well, so... Maybe I'm crazy. I was watching Rupon, because I, I, I was actually wasn't sure. Streams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second try, yes. So, yeah, uh, ah. there's you know there's benefits to each. Uh, Rupon's is uh, 
you know, guaranteed, obviously, to be slower than um, Burst Strike Phoenix Down. But, you know, you know what you're getting, and you don't have right. to go through the possibility where, oh, I'm down three Phoenix and, Downs, I'm down four yeah. Phoenix Downs. What's silly Unlucky. is that there is a there is a good chance that it'll work, too. There's like a more than 50% chance. Yeah, I want to say it's 80%. Work. Yeah, I want to say yeah. it's 80%. <laughs> But it's always when you're doing your best. It's always when you're on PB pace that you'll throw like two and neither right. of them will work. And you'll be like, what? It's 80% it, success rate 20% of the time. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Final Fantasy numbers, my friends. This area is um. kind of interesting. Um, they're both on step count, so it's fine. But uh, you can encounter some really nasty... Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, unfleeable encounters in the desert. Yeah, um, you cannot flee from encounters in the desert. That's right. So it, it looks very scary, but fortunately they're on step count, so it's no problem. Um, but even, you know, when Ma gets here, you'll probably see he's going to take a longer way around because uh, you actually can't get encounters on the uh, the green forest tile. So um, even off step count, it's pretty easy to get across. You just save right before that little short stretch that you have to rock across the desert. And uh, yeah, it's no problem at all. Right. Oh, both Looks Team like. Choco yeah. and Team Tomberry have made their way into the Moogle, Hidden Moogle Village. And uh, we're actually going to, uh, in addition to advancing the story, going to get to pick up a bunch of goodies, as you'll see on both of their streams now. Lots of good stuff in here, yeah. They will skip... Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, Rupon chose to get, uh, or no, he didn't. It must have been the other one. I don't remember what that one chest has. It's one gill. <laughs> oh yeah. I was yeah, thinking, yeah. I was thinking it was the right chest, but it, well, yeah, it's the top right chest. So we also uh, get some more intense gameplay here, where we get to once again wait for about thirty seconds. Oh yeah. Um, I think, especially given that uh, Team Choco and Team Tomberry are going into a. Uh, uh, a little bit of an exposition point of the game. Conveniently enough, with that, we've already explained all the stuff on the big bridge. I think we should uh, give the chat what they want and oh, let them listen my, to the music. I have my copy pasta ready. Oh, excellent. We'll even join in ourselves. Did I expect anything different from you, Curtis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about them riffs. I'm all about them riffs. True. We get to see Bart's, you know, slide his whole body <laughs> yeah. across the floor one more time. That's like four times. He's, he's canonically <laughs> doing the worm across it. <laughs> he, he's doing the sour please, like underneath it. <laughs> Just, yeah, 90 degree <laughs> tilted sour please. <laughs> I love how they hear you just like randomly circles around in the forest there. <laughs> right. That's, is that also, probably similar to like Moogle face? Is that like when a dog has to like twirl around before he sits down? <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> see, right, I, yeah, I would guess so. <laughs> All right, please enjoy the final go. Well, not final go, but please enjoy this rendition of Battle at the Big Bridge.
call me back. With that, our time on the big bridge has come to an end. Great Hope job, chat. you guys chat. all enjoyed. Beautiful copy pasta. I mean, so frankly, oh, between... Go ahead, go ahead. I, was, I was just going to say that between Nobu Ometsu and the Beatles, only one of them wrote Battle on the Big Bridge, so who really, really? had the I larger mean, effect on music? Literally infallible logic. I love it. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, we get some uh, some interesting uh, exposition here, actually. Once um, once the Hiryu comes to pick us up from the Mughal village, uh, we're taken back to Galoof's castle? Galoof is royalty? Not just some crazy old man? So it turns out he is the king of an entire nation. I think also we didn't mention uh, at the end of World One, you know, we we heard that X Death, uh, we heard from Sid that X Death was uh, sealed away long ago with the power of the crystals by four warriors. As it turns out, Galuf was one of those warriors. So not only is he a king, he's actually a bit of a hero. He's got he's got a lot going on. God, his CV is <laughs> looking pretty good for that next job. Oh, if he has abs too, get out. Take me now. <laughs> Look, man, he's 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 getting up there in age. Let's not put unrealistic <laughs> expectations. <laughs> you seen the things the man does? I would guess he's pretty ripped. True. <laughs> Yo, yeah, in the uh, in the ruins where we're uh, chasing uh, King Tycoon, he like holds himself up beneath the floorboards and like <laughs> sc scales he, underneath. Like, climb it. over a wall or something? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have massive upper body strength. <laughs> Also, my uh, my next door neighbor is shooting off fireworks, so I apologize if uh, <laughs> if we get some festivity on the uh, on the channel. Um, so we're actually going to be doing a couple of little things here, and uh, this is Bal Castle, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That's um, right. We picked up the exit spell from the chest, and we bought Break, and Break is going to be useful. Uh, just a couple of times. Uh, Break is a spell in Final Fantasy titles that typically inflicts Petrify. Um, so we'll be using that to deal with a couple of things. And the exit spell is going to be very useful for um, escaping dungeons quickly. Right. But other than that, just a bunch of plot. I think Rupan actually bought a Diamond Helm, if I saw it correctly. Uh, I did not see his shop, unfortunately. Yeah, he bought he bought some helm. I think it was a diamond helm. He couldn't read it fast enough. So uh, you had mentioned the um, that that Galoof was at one point one of these four warriors, right? Um, and as we continue on in World Two here, and now we're in Galoof's world, we're actually going to meet the rest of those uh, warriors one by one, and we're getting ready to right now in this next town. Yeah, right now, the group is sort of on a bit of a detour. That dragon uh, of Kara's that sort of picked them up from the Moogle Village actually is sick. Uh, so they're on the way to Dragon Valley to get something to cure uh, to cure her. Um, but before then, uh, you're going to see both runners sort of step into this large mansion, and we're going to meet uh, another pivotal plot character uh, who actually turns out to be another one of the, the Dawn Warriors. I believe they're called. I would also like to point something out in this scene, and maybe, maybe I'm crazy. This is a little bit of like uh, a plot hypothesis I have, right? So Kelgar is this this other um, this other warrior of light who we're meeting, right? And he challenges Bart or uh, he challenges Bart to kind of yeah. like a, a little duel in his living room, right? And Bart's just like straight up just sucker punches him, just like he kind of like does a little meditation well. to get through. Kelgar's. You, you have to. You have to remember. 
He's no match for Kelgar, but then he remembers the signature move that his dad taught him when he was younger. Yes. And what is that signature move? It is running into him really fast and knocking him into the other room. So here's (laughs) my my question is, after this scene, Kelgar is only showed in bed, like severely injured. (laughs) And then without like giving away what happens later in the game, I kind of wonder this like, is Kelgar's eventual fate Bart's fault? Like, <laughs> would he have been all right had Bart's not just absolutely <laughs> just took look, him to town? Look, look, this is a JRPG. Fate is very important. If Bart's <laughs> didn't do this, Axteth may have taken over the world, okay? Oh, you know what? Yeah, You're exactly. Quite right, quite right, quite right. Um, uh, Team Mog did get second try Phoenix down on Tyrosaur. So. Good job there. Sometimes you can get trolled and you have to throw like four Phoenix Downs. It's awful. Yeah. Um, and I guess we'll see what a uh, route uh, they're going to take uh, through the desert as well. Yeah. I, I would guess because of no step route, I would guess you would just take the forest tiles because uh, like we said earlier, um, all of the encounters that you get on desert tiles here, you cannot run away from. And uh, we don't really have the means to kill them either. Right. So... Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take a detour through the forest tiles. You don't get encounters, so it's nice. Yeah, the game kind of tips you off on that as well because the uh, the Moogle. I think I think the dialogue uh, suggests it as well, but uh, you do see the little cutscene of him walking all the way around. So the game b- sort of nudges you in this direction anyway. Yeah, he like walks on a on a desert tile and then he turns to face you and then he shakes his head and then he walks back onto the grass and then walks through the forest tiles and then he nods. So it's like his way of telling you. Go this way. And um, Dar- Boko is going to heed the advice and do just that. So he's not going to get any encounters, fortunately enough. He does have to be a little bit careful. Yeah. <laughs> so we mentioned uh, Bart's father. Uh, this cutscene that's going on on both uh, Tonberry and Choco's stream, uh, we actually see the two remaining Warrior of Light, uh, or, Warrior, or Dawn Warrior, excuse me, um, one of whom uh, is Zizat, who we, I don't believe, have met yet. Uh, the other one, actually, as we learn from uh, Kelgar, is Bart's father. So we know oh who all goodness. four of the Dawn Warriors are. So fate intertwined in a funny way. You don't hear me laughing about it. Hey, at least they didn't all grow up in an orphanage together. And wow! Wow! Luck, you really luck. would throw shade at nah, the greatest on. one in the series. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that non-jokingly, by the way. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of that game, so... <laughs> <laughs> I am too. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely up there. Uh, so now we're coming up on one of the funnest areas in terms of step route, and I, I say that... Uh, very satirically, uh, this is Dragon Valley. Dragon Valley is one of the more notorious areas for, at least in any percent, for killing your step route. Because there's lots of just weird movements that you typically have to do. And there's really mm. tight corners. And uh, the corners sometimes aren't clear where they actually are. Um, yeah, the bridge is one good example of that. Yeah. It's really easy to accidentally walk into like the post. It's like, oh, oh, I took two extra steps. <laughs> it took me a yep. long time yeah. to figure that out when I was first doing this. Um, yeah, but I will say we get a piece of equipment here that is going to be pivotal for the rest of the yeah. run, um, and yes. that well, I thought they were getting ready to get it, but that is the bone mail. Um, mm-hmm. So the bone mail has multiple functionality; like it's a really useful piece of equipment, right? Um, so its main two things I would say is one, it reduces our speed significantly. Um, pretty much anybody you equip it on, they will go last. Um, which is going to be a big deal because in many boss fights, we need our, our team to be going in a certain order. So we put jobs to them and we put equipment on them for that specific purpose. So that's going to give us a lot more uh, creativity and a lot more ability in how we actually arrange the speed. Uh, and the other one is a very interesting uh, piece of tech. It uh, reverses uh, healing uh Da- healing damage, healing numbers, whatever you want to call it. Anything that would heal us will now give us damage. Yeah, it basically, yeah, it basically gives you zombie. Undead. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of undead, you'll see, I haven't seen Rup- Rupon do it, but uh, 
you may have noticed that Axe Odin, on the way, uh, did get a zombie dragon encounter, and he chose to throw a phoenix down at it. Um, on the one hand, this is nice for some uh, experience, but a, a big reason, and this is one of the, uh, at least in terms of endgame, the biggest differences between Glitchless and uh, and uh, the regular any percent route, is that it drops a dragon fang, which is a super, super important chemist yes. mix item. Yes. Um, in any percent, you can dupe these, but uh, in Glitchless, obviously, you cannot. And uh, so he's going to get, I think we get two of them. Uh I forget what the other one's from, but uh, you definitely have to use them smart uh, in Glitchless. Uh, in Glitched, you use them like they're candy because you, you dupe them right. later on. You, you, but, you get uh, somebody and you sell them for money. Exactly. Yeah, they yeah, also so, sell for a ton of money. That's right, yeah. yeah. The, the Dragon Fang uh, is used to mix a mix called Dragon Power, which increases yeah. the target's level by 20. And I mentioned earlier that uh, Samurai's Guild Toss scales off level. So in any percent, and also in this run, but to a lesser extent, we will use Dragon Power um, to seriously beef up uh, Guild Toss. And then there's a cheaper version we can use with high potions instead of Dragon Fangs called Samson Power. Half a Dragon Power uh, increased by 10 still good, but it's way cheaper and you can buy high potions. So Yeah, Speaking so you... Guild Tossing, we're uh, taking out this next boss here you plant with exclusively Guild Tossing. Yeah, this is uh, something we may have not have been obvious, because I think it hasn't really come up yet, but uh, not only is Giltas OP, it's actually AoE too, which is, uh, this is like really useful for this fight, but it's also yeah. extremely important later um, that it be AoE, so it's, you know, it's it's pretty much the perfect ability for this point of the game. Yeah, the other cool thing about the AoE on um, Giltas is that it doesn't uh, suffer any damage reduction. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it deals the same amount. Of, like, if you take yes, two targets I, with the same yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't set up any damage reduction. Whereas if you cast, like, a spell multi-target, for example, it will deal reduced damage because it's hitting multiple targets. Um, we're putting that exit spell to good use and just uh, opting not to walk out of Dragon Valley because it's a lot of effort. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Way out. I believe uh, Guild Toss actually does damage based on how much money you have up to a certain maximum. Um, because I know that, uh, for example, there's some routes I've seen that uh, actually in this area where you would do a shop in Kelb and uh, you need to sell down to a specific amount for an encounter because if you don't, the Guild Toss will kill an enemy that you want to catch. So it, it kind of has... A little bit of strategy involved. You don't really need to think about it too much uh, in most routes, which is really nice. Um, you just sort of like have these target points where, okay, going into the final dungeon, I need you know a little over ninety thousand, for example, uh, stuff like that. But uh, it, it definitely has some interesting uh, behind-the-scene calculations. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, it is affected by enemy defense, so it's not as effective against enemies that have super high defense. Uh, which will I I believe in glitchless will should come into play uh, at least once towards the end of the game. Yeah, I think in glitch it still doesn't really matter because uh, of the dragon fang dupe. So regardless of the situation, we just buff up our character and do almost Just max damage, damage anyway so it really yeah, doesn't yeah. make a difference <laughs> kind yeah, of the, exactly. kind of why the dragon fangs uh so like mythic mentioned there is you know another cheaper version that does has half uh half potency and i don't think we mentioned but both of these uh mixes actually stack so in theory if you can go long enough the half uh cheaper version is just as good it just takes longer yeah um, some fights aren't some fights that's not really a like time is not a luxury you have so we do use the dragon fang sort of in specific spots uh for glitchless right mm -hmm. uh right now on a uh, team tomberry's uh stream you can see that they have delivered that uh healing herb back to the uh to the hear you and have uh, have cured it but it didn't want to take it at first so this is the part of the game where the kind of like shows you how selfless lena is and that she like had ate part of the the poisonous herb to show the hear you that it was okay to eat and like and cure it so she kind of like puts herself in danger and we learn a little bit more about her like personality here yeah the plant is actually toxic to humans but not to 
to hear you. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely, it kind of goes along with, you know, right early on in the game when she walks over all the poison plants to, uh, to right. uh, get it back on uh, North Mountain. Right, right. And uh, I think here we learn about the Sage Guido, who uh, may have some uh, hints for us about defeating Xdeath. And uh, because right now you may have seen it um, when we left Xdeath's castle and we did the battle on the big bridge. Um, Speaking a, of a, which. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting ready to get to it again. Um, a large red dome appeared above Xdeath's castle. And this was a shield. So he's putting up a giant shield so nobody can get back in. So that's the current uh, mission of the game right now is to find out how to get back into Xdeath's castle to defeat him. And the sage may have some words for us. Yep, so on both Tom Barry and Choco's uh, streams, we're going to take the newly cured Hiryu and make our way towards uh, Guido's Island, which fortunately for us is like a 20 second flight away from where we <laughs> yeah, already very are. Close. Very JRPG for you right there. And all we have to do is just walk right inside. No problem. No problem at all. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, it's there's a problem. a problem. Oh no. <laughs> I quite like, uh, as an aside, that when they're surprised that their eyes grow large, but Ferris, because of her hair, only has one eye because the other one yes. is underneath. <laughs> it's such a good touch. It's a there's nice so, little touch. <laughs> there's so many good artistic touches to this game. It like it's so good. I oof. I could have we could do an entire length of a relay race like an entire 80 90 hours of me just, just talking gushing. about how every little <laughs> detail of ff5 is just Mwah! chef's kiss great yeah. also i do i also like the reveal which we'll see in a little while about the sage about this ancient wizard also uh, another another banger alert we should go ahead and give to chat right now to say, uh, if you liked Battle on the Big Bridge, you're gonna love Battle on the Big Boat. So get your uh, get your sour please ready. One of the rare instances where the sequel is just as good as the original. Oh my gosh! How how many are there? Maybe Back to the Future Two. Oh, the other one. <laughs> this is a mut this this is definitely a musky topic. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at chat. Like, is he in here right now? <laughs> he would have a lot <laughs> if he were, I think. <laughs> but we meet the uh, the last warrior of dawn here. Um, yep, yeah, we saw him in the cutscene already, and we mentioned his name. But this is Zizat, and he's pretty important for the next uh, couple segments here. Uh, none as important as which of being the vessel through which we get to hear the banger music yet again. Oh. It, is there a higher calling in life, truly? Oh, there certainly isn't. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we take a rest on the boat and then are so rudely awakened by riffs. 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 But we're under attack. Um, X-Death has sent his minions uh, to the boat to, uh, to destroy them. And destroy the rifts. And um, there's a little bit of a difference here. So we're going to find our good friend Greg. Or as some people know him, Gilgamesh again. Um, and there's a little difference in between the any percent and the glitchless one. So I'm not as used to this one. But in glitched I know that we can throw a death potion on him. Which will just take him out immediately. But um, there's a little, little bit of a different strat here. Yeah, Gilgamesh is one of those rare cases where, for some reason, he's just immune to death, even despite being a boss. So, right. I mean, if it, they're going to give it to us, we're going to take it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he also him, give though, AP, so, like, you work so hard, he doesn't even give you AP. True, he's susceptible to death, but technically you don't defeat him, because you don't get any spoils for it, basically. That's right. There's no that's AP. Right. Well, back. you do get, you technically can get a spoil. I think it's a gold shield that you don't True. want to take. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I always forget. 
This is the first time we're going to see Dark Shock, actually, and Rupon gets it first try. That, th nice, this spell can nice. be very finicky. There was a little bit of discussion, I noticed, uh, in the FF5 Discord about how Dark Shock works. Does it have a better chance of sticking the higher level you are? I think that is one of the... one of the uh, parts of the calculation, because there are points where we're going to be using the Samsung power uh, buffing of our level, because otherwise, I think there's one point near the end game where we use Dark Shock, and if you don't buff, it's like a 2% chance to hit, so. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's awful sometimes. Before we fight Gilgamesh, though, we need to just dispense of a little goblin, which we're seeing on Choco stream. And uh, his strat is going to be the same as Rupon, so we'll see how lucky or unlucky he gets with his Dark Shock attempts. One sort of and unfortunate uh, portion of this strat is that Dark Shock costs quite a bit of MP, so uh, in a way, you are limited to how much Dark Shocking you can do. On this fight in particular, I think it doesn't matter because you have access to reset. Uh, I might be mistaken, but I believe you do. Uh, Didn't get the using first one. And he did not get the first one, yeah. So this is something that can that can uh, compound upon itself. Also He's gonna interesting. Haste, uh... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say interestingly, uh, you saw Ferris there use a high potion on herself, and uh, like we said earlier, the um, the bone mail uh, kind of gives you a zombie status, so that healing items do damage to you. So we've intentionally killed Ferris off which is for a strat for a boss coming up a little bit later. So that's, that's kind of an interesting way to do it, is take care of it now during this fight, so that on a later fight we can have a uh, a party member who's down for a good reason. Yeah, you saw Rupon do the same thing. It's super important to have one party member dead, and you'll see uh, uh, really soon, actually, at the top of this tower that we're uh, entering right now on Tonberry's screen. Um, but yeah. Meanwhile, on the Mog end, uh, he's coming to the end of Dragon Valley. Uh, I think he's not had too much trouble, fortunately. So again, we're just going to be going straight to uh, the Hear You Plant boss. No step manipulation needed in this case. And uh, again, Samurai's are OP. We're just going to chuck some money at our problems. It's very Love reminiscent him. of real life. <laughs> Yeah, I actually no, really liked Barrier Tower Dungeon. Um, you know, it's it's not, like, super remarkable, but it's like, you know, you go outside of it and you go inside and you see all these floors and, you know, you have the sort of cutaway camera that shows the characters yeah. the, the scaffolding things. I think it's just, like, a really cool... Like, you can see the scope of, like... It looks like you're almost on par with the mountains in the back, you know? It's really cool. Yeah, also, it's a, tons it's a of great gill here. 9,000 yes. and 18,000 gill just randomly hanging out in this tower yeah, and conveniently you don't have to go out of your way at all to get either of these chests they're pretty much just exactly. right on yeah, your that's path the big thing yeah. yeah also when we enter this dungeon we're given essentially like walkie talkies and uh, we're <laughs> able to communicate with zeza um as they go uh <laughs> to try to turn off the um the barrier's power to Exet's castle. Yeah, we're making our way to the top of the tower while Zezat's going to the bottom of the tower. Uh, sort of a split mission uh, going on here. Meanwhile... I got a good, got a good feeling about this Zeza guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had such good luck with uh, all the uh, Dawn Warriors so far. Surely nothing bad could happen to any of them <laughs> at any point in the game. I mean, Bards could, like, sucker punch him, right? <laughs> yeah, but, you know... Right <laughs> The old man had it coming, or wolf. <laughs> I th oh dear, this is awkward. Did Choco? Oh no, no, I'm right. He was supposed to learn blue magic, I think, on Bart's. On Mog stream? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mog was supposed to. Yeah, yeah. Bart's was supposed to learn blue at some point. So he's gonna have to do some backup. Oh, wait, no. Mm. Had to do some creative on the fly routing. Yeah. Um, but we're coming up to Atomos on Team Tomberry stream, and this is why we needed somebody dead. If somebody is dead during the Atomos fight, um, he will continuously try to pull them in 
and we revive Ferris before we end the fight with, you know, level 5 doom and math stuff, but if yeah. if you enter the fight with nobody dead, uh, he will just spam Comet until somebody is dead. And Comet, I believe in this game is, I believe the one he casts is AoE, and it hits really hard. Hmm. Yeah, and not only so... does he spam that, he has lots of agility, and he has auto haste. So if you go, you can't just you can't just go into battle and then kill someone. It's not really an option. Uh, so you actually have to set this up before the boss. Otherwise, you're you're not in great shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, fortunately for Boko, it does look like Bart's is just one AP away from winning the Luke command. Which can be taken care of on the gobbledygook, on the uh, the boat if he so desires, or here. But now Bart's learned that blue command, and he should be all good to go. I think that kind of goes to show too that like, even though this game has kind, you know, it has a, a really good notes. It has really good notes. It has a really good uh, guide to it. Um, game knowledge still is a huge factor in these things, uh, especially for marathons where like something can go wrong and having that knowledge of like exactly what you need and where you can get it is enormous. Yep. And yeah, absolutely. The gill, like I said, the gill is certainly not as lenient as any percent, but, um, expending one additional gill toss is not going to be a deal breaker here. So he is certainly back, uh, back where he needs to be. Right. I believe at this point, levels on the party don't really matter anymore. Yeah. Except for level oh. two old. That is oh, okay. the, one, the one exception. Yes. Oh. Two tries. Three tries on Dark Shock. So now we're getting our first use of reset here. Yeah. Basically, the way... This is why we have reset, and specifically Time Mage, is um, if Dark Shock, Shock misses too much, we can reset the fight. Yeah, and this is purely an MP thing. Like, Dark Shock, I think someone correct, I think it's 22 MP. Uh, that is a lot, and you you can't, it's not like you can dupe ethers like, at any percent. You just don't really have a great way to, or excuse me, it's actually 27. Uh, He's getting really bad luck here. Yeah. You just can't That's really sustain. Misses. You can't sustain missing it. Oh, oh wow. Oh, Goodness no. gracious. That's Luckily, he's 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 not in any danger here, just due to the way you know, like we said, Atomos. If someone's dead, uh, he just pulls in the the dead party member every turn, and eventually, yeah. if they got to you or got to him, he would eject them from battle, which is just not going to happen. Um, so he's not in danger, but naturally, this is losing quite a bit of time trying to get this cast. If he finally there we go. get it though, yeah, um, after the second reset, so not first, too try. first try, first third try, third try, time. yeah, one try. <laughs> oh, by the way, we have a submarine, so that's that is a thing that happened after the battle on the big boat. Yeah, the submarine, I mean, the music that plays during the submarine section is actually a uh, big, big Fung Balls' uh, favorite music. Fun fact: Oh, big Fung Balls is a very good runner of this game. I think currently second place. Uh, currently right? third, I believe. Uh, third. Soma yeah. had the world record, and then Masudo took it back. Yeah, Mas Ooh, Masudo, incredible runner. Yeah. The um, French dominance of FF5. You love to see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, our our friend Zeza um, has run into a snag here in the uh, tower. Um, we were successfully able to disable uh, X-Death's protection on his castle. But there was a complication in the tower, and Zeza is trapped inside as it is exploding. Um, yeah. Yeah. Our so. first of four Dawn Warriors uh, is bedridden, and now our second is uh, a little bit worse off than that. Right. To, to quote uh, Chat's wisdom, he is no longer Daijobu. Feels bad. Yeah, we're not doing a very good job of keeping these legendary warriors alive and in good shape, you know? <laughs> well, don't worry. We've got Galuff on our side. There's nothing going to ever possibly... <laughs> Yeah, also, King Tycoon we'll, we'll, too. We'll protect like, him. <laughs> There's a lot of individuals. Who are uh, giving a lot. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you everyone, you get everyone gets two freebies. It's the third onward where it's a problem. <laughs> um. So Team Tonberry is now going to find the Sage at the uh, the island that 
uh, sank beneath the waves earlier. Yep, fortunately enough, uh, ships in FF5 are equipped to submarines, so uh, we were able to grab that after our uh, battle at the big boat, and uh, we uh, made our way all the way back to that sinking island with the submarine, and now we are sort of going through it so we can find Guido, the sage, we were looking for in the first place. I think that this uh this dungeon and it may just be me, but I feel like it's very reminiscent of what would become like dungeons in FF six. Like the mm -hmm. kind of like pressing buttons and like parts of the cave moving out of the way. It really feels like like the cave in between uh Narsh and Figaro and other places. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's FF5 true. FF five has a lot of that too. Like there's also the um uh, uh what's the what's like the the lava cave here called? I for I completely forget. But there's a number of dungeons in this uh, game where there's lots of shifting walls and, you know, pressing buttons and moving rooms and that kind of thing that yeah. they, they really expanded upon in FF6, which I think is so cool. The puzzle aspect in FF6 is just incredible. And yeah, in this game, too, especially. Um, but we've uh, we finally met the sage. Uh, <laughs> he's a turtle. Turns out he's a turtle, <laughs> which is excellent. Turtle. Excellent. <laughs> Not only a turtle, a very cute turtle. A and talking a very wise turtle. turtle. A very wise one. Yeah. Indeed. Unfortunately, he can talk. So basically, he tells us uh, that we need to make our way to the forest of more uh, because there are crystals kept there that X Death is trying to destroy and for whatever you know convenience sake uh this force is also where x death was created 500 years ago so, so everything's sort of coming together and technically all three teams are on that island right now true so. this is as close as it's been <laughs> now there's a level five oh, is so dramatic would you kill multiple enemies with it? <laughs> it takes forever yeah yeah no. One thing I really like about uh, what Team Tomberry is doing right now, um, so when you go from the underwater island to the Forest of Moor, there's two different ways you can go. You're pretty much on opposite ends of the world, right? And one way, there are significantly more landmarks to, uh, to kind of find your way. Mm. And if you go the other direction, it's a little harder, a little less, uh, fewer landmarks. But it's one tile shorter exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> worth. Worth. Worth it. <laughs> well, I guess all three runners are actually going to uh, make a pit stop in the city of Moor. Uh, Rupon's buying a bunch of consumables. A lot of this is actually for uh, combines that you'll see uh, with the chemist later. And we'll see if he... Alex, oh, he's buying some ethers as well, which is interesting. Let's see if he elects to go to the magic shop. Oh, and he's picking up the Guardian, which sells for a decent amount. There's a lot of little extra goodies that you can get uh, in more. Magic shop, indeed. Did he just buy Thundaga? Oh, yeah, okay. I think it was uh, Thundersaur. Uh, I know that, uh, so, uh, in the Pyramid of more um we'll see when we get there there's an op well i won't call it optional but there's a boss that you are trying not to run into which is unfleeable um and without this little detour to more in this category there's no way to defeat him so it's basically just a reset um but uh yeah i think that's what he got there there is a you strat the, involving the mystic heads Knight. right that's right. I think he bought. Yeah. He must have bought Thun yeah. Thunder Sword. Uh, I, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, someone said Reflect and Thundaga. Yeah. I think I saw Thundaga, but it could yeah. be Thunder oh. Sword as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's a threat. There's a strat with Reflect and Thundaga, and there's also a strat involving Mystic Knight. Real quick, I, I think uh, we should allow the chat to oh. enjoy one last battle. Of course. Yes. Oh. Forgive my transgressions. <laughs>
Incredible. <sighs> Excellent. Did I tell you all that I love riffs? <laughs> you oh. did once Ooh. or twice, but I think with a song like this, it bears repeating. <laughs> it absolutely does. Unfortunately, that is the last time we're going to hear that, hear that banger tune. So I hope you all enjoyed the battle at the big bridge tunes. Now you're going to see Rupan doing some funny little stuff here. Moogle is blocking the doorway. <laughs> so Rupan is being very aggressive and rude to this other Moogle to try and uh, uh, get his friend to move out of the way. Um, this is completely RNG. Sometimes he just doesn't want to move. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. So we did miss a good... Uh, we missed most of the um, greenery version of the Forest of Moor on Team Tomberry stream, but we will see it again on Team Chocos here and on um, Team Mogs in a moment. Um, once you progress a certain amount through the forest... X Death lights it on fire. And so uh, we're given an opportunity at that point to collect a couple items before, well, while the forest is on fire. I'm not sure that we do it in this route, but there are a couple things you can grab real quick before you uh, have to escape. But eventually, a Moogle that we befriended earlier comes to our aid and like has a hole in the ground that we can jump into where we can wait out the fire. Yeah, it's kind of also a nice uh, spot to do a little bit of step count work. You saw on Rupon's stream, he was just sort of running around aimlessly, or seemingly aimlessly. Um, there's actually... It's actually like a timed event, so you, the Moogle doesn't come to save us until after a certain amount of time, so you can actually get in a lot of free step manipulation to do whatever you need to do, uh, because not only do steps increment in this area, um, you can't get encounters, so you sort of have this free time to do... You know, you... you, you you can't make it go any faster, so you might as well. Um, another interesting thing is that uh, the chest that is in that little fire cutscene, uh, I can't recall what the second thing, but if you pick it up during the fire cutscene, it has the Aegis shield, which I believe uh, Team Choco and Team Mog do. Um, but if you don't open the chest, if you pick it up after coming up from the little underground spring area, you get something else, which is what Rupon did. So, a uh, little small route difference there, too. Yeah, I don't know what it has uh, the other time. Yeah, I can't recall what it is, unfortunately, but uh, I have seen it. Uh, I have seen it um, done before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we're coming up on a fight that is actually somewhat scary yeah um, yeah is. this is the seal guardians fight and uh it's not too bad but sometimes they will decide to target the same person and kill them and you need four guild tosses i th i'm pretty sure to kill here uh so if they kill somebody then it's really scary because they'll start spamming level three magic on you after yeah. the first turn it's very hard to recover um, from it, yeah. Yeah, it's super hard to recover. And also, you might have noticed, well, maybe noticed, um, Rupan actually put the bone mail on Galoof here. That will be extremely important. Right. Um, for an upcoming fight. Also, I'll say two, I'll say a quick uh, interjection just to say, chat has our backs, and it's an Aegis shield if you pick it up during the fire cutscene, or a flame shield. Uh, you know, appropriately enough if you pick it up after. So, Rupon oh. going for the flame shield, and I believe if I believe if uh, memory served, uh, Axodon did pick it up uh, during this cutscene, so he has the Aegis shield. Um, also, yes. uh, the crystals, I think we didn't mention, this is probably the number one spot in the route where Giltas being AoE is yes. the most important thing. Um, the way this fight sort of, uh, it's gimmick, if you will, if you don't kill them all at the same time, I believe they just start spamming spells, which if basically what it means is if you don't kill them all on the same round, you die. <laughs> so, right. yep. uh, fortunately for us, Giltos being AOE makes it incredibly useful. And also fortunately, it looks like Team Mog just got a first try Dark Shock on Atomo, so really Great. nice to see there, too. Good. It's a good time to make back up. Yep, gaining a little bit of time on Choco, who definitely got uh, their fair share of trolling on that fight. Mm -hmm. So we've um, we've gotten to the point now where we've uh, found the four crystals in the Forest of Moor, and X-Death has beat us there. 
Um, and he's using the power of the crystals to hold everybody down. Uh, Kara tried to come and rescue us, but then was uh, stricken down as well. And in his rage, Galoof has gone Super Saiyan 3 and is taking on <laughs> X-Death by himself. I mean, this fight's, like, pretty easy. Like, Galoof is, you know, Super Saiyan, right? Like, surely, yes. you know... He's, he's gonna use Spirit go Bomb. Oh, he tried to use Spirit Bomb. Okay, he needs to charge up more for Spirit Bomb. Right, he needs we need to get energy more for the energy. Spirit Bomb. Yeah, we need Chat's energy. Oh my God, he's, he's, you, you, you guys oh, have done it. Dead. Oh, oh, too much energy. Him. We gave him too oh. much energy. Oh God. Well, that's why the bone mail was put on him because you technically could like hit X Death eighty thousand times to end the fight, um, but Galoof is not like you saw that he got hit down to zero health repeatedly. Uh, Galoof is not supposed to die in that fight, but if you put the bone mail on him and then uh, revive Galoof while he's alive with the bone mail, uh, that is one way to game over the fight, and uh, you're not supposed to game over, so the game just carries on. Yeah, this is like another point where glitchless can be... I mean, statistically, it's not, but, you know, sometimes statistics don't matter, which is the Phoenix Downs, <laughs> I think we said, are roughly 80%. If you run out of Phoenix Downs to end the fight with Galuf, you're you're just pretty much screwed. Just, I, I don't as far as I'm away. I'm aware there's there's no way to recover. Like you can end the fight by doing a ton of guild tosses, but you know, it's sort of like an immeasurable amount of money to make back, so you're pretty much literally just screwed. spend ten minutes attacking him and then pray that you can make money back. I'd also uh, like to note that recall like we said that uh, Galuf uh, does in fact have the bone mail on. And what does that mean? It means that restorative items harm him. Uh, and, you know, those of you who don't know Japanese, you may not know what's going on in this cutscene, but Kara, in a desperate bid to save her grandfather's life, is casting all the restorative spells in her possession <laughs> on Galuf, who is wearing the bone mail. Oh, no! So I'm not, you know, we were talking about Bart's and, and uh, you know, and uh, in Kelgar, I'm I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm just you know I'm just stating sounds, the facts here. That sounds just pretty stating, finger pointy. <laughs> I'm just stating the facts, okay? <laughs> so as you can see, this is sort of like another one of those uh, spots, not unlike uh, the prison scene in the first hour of the game, where we kind of just have to let uh, we just have to yeah. let Kara grieve. Uh, and get it out of her system for 45 seconds, uh, and then she's good to go. Uh, and fortunately for us, uh, you know, we've lost a party member that we had for the entire game. So, you know, we've put a lot of effort into developing this character. You know, we we, we were specifically routing AP to give him, you know, certain jobs, abilities. Um, and it's all gone. But all lucky gone. for us, Kara has the exact skill set that Galuf did. So... Yeah, exactly. she has a little bit different base stats, but I was gonna that, say, means, yeah, 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 we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, her base stats are like a little bit different. I think she's more uh, uh, magic oriented or more speed oriented, whereas yeah, Galoof is more she's fast fast character in the game. Yeah, yeah, she is a fast character in the game. Yeah, and uh, but aside from that, she does have all the uh, all the same uh, progress towards uh, uh, every job that we invested towards uh, Galuf as well. Which is right. very nice for us. Imagine if you had to like <laughs> start over. Old, she's like uh, a, she's like level her, one. Yeah, I was gonna say give her the old <laughs> FF4 paladin treatment. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and if that uh, if that wasn't sad enough, we do get to relive it now on uh, Team Choco's screen as well. Yep. We'll see how many tries uh, it takes him for the Phoenix. I think Rupon it took two. Ooh, as you can one. see, oh, first, first try, try. Nice. not bad. Yeah, he only, as you can see, it varies a little bit depending on what happens along the way. But he had five, so you know, eighty percent chance. It's you know, yeah. statistically, you know, shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but you know, statistically, if you only have two, it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, let me tell you, it definitely yeah. happens. Oh yeah. But uh, we are now flying to Excess Castle. The barrier is down. We can now enter it. So bring, that's the closest spot you can land. Yeah. You can't land inside of it for whatever reason. 
Hey, even though Galuf actually flies into it at the start of World 2, so... Yeah, it's like you, can't you don't get to do fly that. Into it. <laughs> well, they, they had Gilgamesh. They didn't feel like they had to have the shield up at the time. That's true, oh, interesting. that's true. They we have to set the... battle speed to 1. Battle speed 1? Uh, it may be hmm. for uh, learning level 2 old, perhaps? Oh. Well, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's where this happens. Duh. Yeah, we have, uh, I mean, the order of which we do things here sort of depends on uh, the individual step rest, but the beginning of this dungeon, we actually have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, we do need to get some experience, uh, but the main things are, at least for this route, there's uh, sort of two really important things. We One is we need to learn level two old, uh, which will be uh, from an enemy in the very first room after we can get encounters. And we also need to catch two mini dragons. This is sort of like, I don't magic think I've dragons, ever, yeah. yeah, or magic dragons, excuse me. <laughs> mini dragons is what we fought earlier. Um, <laughs> Uh, magic dragons. I, I don't think I've seen any route that doesn't catch magic dragons because uh, yeah. there's a certain boss. Yeah, they're just too good. Um, when you release them, they do. They basically just do max damage if you're using them appropriately. And there's a right. certain boss later on that is just, you know, it, it's just too good to pass up. So pretty much every route, glitchless or otherwise, is going to be catching too many dragons. Um, yeah, it's just a slightly different like uh, encounter itself. I believe in this one, yeah. if we're on step route, it's individual mini dragons, which is, makes yeah. it a little bit easier. Although it isn't hard on the other uh, route as well, where you get three magic dragons at once and two other enemies as well. Yeah. Which yeah, you get some experience for, for guild tossing. Yep, it's not too bad. And actually... It's it's sort of, I believe, I, I actually don't know what Rupon's route does. I know that uh, both Choco and Mog's routes are going to be getting the two um, the two catches, I think, from two individual encounters. Um, but yeah. there are some routes where, you know, like uh, Curtis was saying, uh, where there's three among other enemies in an encounter. You can actually just uh, get both catches within one encounter as well. Which actually, we'll see me. what we'll see what Mog elects to do when he gets there, since he isn't on step count. So he may choose to do something like oh, that. True. We'll see. We still have um, we still have another uh, enemy caught and ready for a release, don't we? Or did we use uh, them? No, we uh, used the uh, the page sixty four. Yeah, oh, the page sixty four is on uh, Gilgamesh. Yep. Ah. Uh, how and silly. And I of me. don't believe Rupon uh, collected or caught anything. No, he he, he doesn't want to fight three. Uh, oh, he actually doesn't have a mediator right now. I think he's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. He does it. Yeah, he does a little bit different here. So what he's doing here is he's uh, uh he's going to learn uh, level two old. So uh, actually, I forget what the mediator skill is called. Uh, uh it's not tame. It's uh, control. Control. Um, yeah, control. He's going to use control with the mediator, and that's when you saw the um the uh, magic dragon turn around uh basically what that does is it allows you to use abilities so one of the abilities he can use is level two old um but ordinarily uh he would cast it on himself so we take a quick detour back all the way back when we made the pit stop and more we got reflect um we use that to cast reflect on the mini dragon and then use the control ability to have him cast level two old on himself which then reflects back to us so easily hey. done a pit stop that Team Mog is currently making right now. Yep. Very good timing. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rupon only caught one magic dragon so far. Or did yeah. he catch a second one? He, I believe he's only caught one. Yeah, I think he only caught one as well. He also did set up my favorite job in the game, though, Mystic Knight. Excellent. Actually, interesting that he's doing it now. I, I wonder what that's for. I'm actually unsure. Ooh, that was Ooh, a clean ooh bridge. the frame perfect bridge. Wow. Uh, so Excellent. that bridge, you step on a little tile in the center of the room, and it, it causes this bridge to go repeatedly left to right across the screen. And if you you drop the bridge by moving off the tile, and uh, if you drop the bridge into one of the pillars on the either side, you get forced into a random battle. And the problem with those random battles is that they advance the step counter by one. Yeah. Um, so you have to adjust for it and take some steps, eat a step on an event tile somewhere to account for it. Um, so you really don't want to hit the, the pillars if you can. Avoid it. So you can see on uh, 
Team Choco's screen right now. Kelgar is giving the rest of his energy to dispel the uh, the spell that is cast on Exteth's castle, which is why at first it looked like a normal castle, and now it looks like a big old meat dungeon. Um, <laughs> and this is where I meant, would he be fine if Bart's didn't... <laughs> completely lay him out he might have been okay uh, so we're batting uh, our, you know our batting average is not very good on these uh these it's not good warriors. it's not looking too hot as a matter of fact i think that's uh, all of them so rupon going into the penultimate battle of world two with x death uh this guy is pretty scary um they're sort of always a number of ways to get through him, I believe. Uh, yeah, he's going to be going for the level two old. So this is, uh, it's going to gradually decrease his, uh, his level. And you're probably wondering why he's fleeing like that. Um, it's possible to overshoot the level. Yeah. So his like level is decreasing over time. So if you don't cue that level five death at the correct time, you could say, let's say he's, uh, I'm actually unsure what his base level is, but let's just say his base level is level 66. It's possible that it can just, you know, go down and you miss that. You miss that choice. Oh, was he actually 66? Oh, oh okay. nice. We're just, we're oh, just yeah. too, we're just too good. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> thought it was hard. in the 60s. Yeah, so it, 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 so actually 66. So it is technically, if you wait too long, his level could go you know, down from 66, 65, yeah. and then down to 64. And then, you know, at that point, you're pretty much screwed. So, um, yeah, because he uses pretty harsh uh, level three uh, spells. Yeah, he uh, nasty enemy. That's why he's so tall. <laughs> if you were shorter, he, he wouldn't be, you know, scared. That's what taller, taller people have more magic power. That's that's how it works in real life. Is that how it works in real life? Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't have any magic power. I'm pretty short. <laughs> oh, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe you have to well, be over six feet to have magic powers. That's probably right. Dang. Um, <laughs> Team Choco now has a uh, level two old as well. So as we mentioned, now that he's got x -Death, we are now in world three last of three worlds um we're making our way back into the castle where king tycoon is no longer presiding because uh well you know we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to relive uh old memories so uh yeah as we found out a while back uh both ferris and uh and lena are children of the late king tycoon so that makes them heirs to the throne and uh we get a very nice looking sprite of ferris who <laughs> bart's also seems yeah, to agree yeah. it is oh guys <laughs> yep it is the like the wolf tongue you know, like his tongue rolls <laughs> out onto the table and he like banks on the table <laughs> <laughs> also i will say like just so, so i think sometimes people say about ff5 that its story isn't as like winding and intricate as some of the other final fantasies but I do love that because we stick with the same party the entire game, we do kind of get to see some good banter back and forth. And one of the things I love about this game is we kind of get Kara and Bart's like magical journey at, at this yes. point in the game. We're like, <laughs> yeah, they're like the only two characters we play as for a little while. And it turns out that they both act like children, <laughs> like like Bart's <laughs> is significantly older, but also acts like a child. And they like hit each other around and yell at each other. And it's very cute. Max Odin also gracing us with the perfect bridge. Uh, it's kind of funny. There are three tiles uh, that are acceptable for um, for the bridge placement. So, you know, you can be one tile left or one tile right. Um, so pretty much every step route will account for the possibility that you won't get in the center. So anytime you do see... Um, Anytime you do see someone get the bridge in the center, they'll take extra steps because uh, right. those plus two for either side that it could go to are always sort of built into the step route. Yeah. Now I will say this, I, this is kind of my opinion here, but I think that X death's castle is the point at which I would say, if you mess up step route here, the differences are going to be yeah. smaller from here on. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, because Excess Castle is the last time uh, we're, you know, searching for specific encounters. You know, we're looking for level two old and magic dragons. Um, after this, uh, there's nothing else. Uh, everything from here on out, the step count is only serving to give us fewer encounters, not specific encounters. So uh, there really is nothing else. So uh, actually, I, I will say... Uh, Major props to both Rupon and Axe Odin. They kept step count all the way to this point. So um, we'll see if they can bring it home. But, you know, even if they don't, for whatever reason, uh, they've made it through pretty much everything yeah. that is affected by step count other than just, you know, sheer numerical encounter values. Mm -hmm. I will say the, the next location, uh, main location that'll be coming up is the Pyramid of Moor. And for my money, that's the most difficult place to keep your step count. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's a few sort of, uh, shall we say, additional mechanics uh, that we'll talk about when we get there. Uh, until now, we'll see Choco finishing up uh, World 2 as well. Same strat as before. We're going to cast level 2 old and we're going to try our best to tag X Death uh, when he's level 65. And um, this is something that actually changes uh in difficulty if you will based on the battle speed so this fight in uh battle speed one active for example which is the mm, historically more popular uh category in japan uh, that being fastest battle speed active battle uh active battle type um fights like this are actually non-trivial because it is far more difficult to sort of catch the gradually decreasing level uh, so having uh, the slower battle speed actually makes it a lot easier to time. Meanwhile, on Mog Stream, we're going to see our final uh, Super Saiyan Galuf uh, cutscene. <laughs> I oh, so sad. Alexa play I... Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> I surely regret uh, doubting Galuf, uh, calling him an old man earlier. He's he's no old man at heart. True, 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 true. Um, so now that we're in World 3, uh, basically World 3 is the, what's called the merged world. It's basically World 1 and World 2 sort of overlapped on top of each other. It's um, really cool. Yeah, and you might have noticed uh, when Rupan walked uh, with Kara up to the Pirate's Cove to get Boko... Uh, there was no encounters. You actually don't get any encounters uh, there. That's a no encounter yes. zone, which is which is nice. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, we're coming up on the ant lion. Um, low HP, not too difficult. Um, I know, do we do the Samson's power in this one? No, this. Oh no, this we don't. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple yeah, times guy... where I can't remember which which yes. one is glitched and which one's glitchless. <laughs> Yeah, there's a also, lot of similarity. I believe, I believe statistically, like across all Final Fantasies, this is the latest Antlion fight in any Final Fantasy. <laughs> yes. Antlion is mostly a yeah. relatively early game boss. Yes. It's fair. Like in and four FF9, and nine. it's in disc two. Mm -hmm. Four, it's uh, pretty early too, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's one like of this, the very first bosses. It's like the second boss, third boss, I think. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. Boss, yeah. Now we can cure Rosa. I love that. <laughs> Some, something I, I love this little scene right here yeah, i was gonna say something i find <laughs> particularly amusing when, when i first started running this game so so sort of the intended thing what's happening here is that uh they're being teased by uh we later learn you know it's ferris teasing them for falling into this hole and running off um and it's supposed to be bart's getting teased but the fact that we have Kara in a higher slot than Bart, <laughs> it's actually kind of mean when you think about it, that they're teasing right. like a 10-year-old girl. It's one thing to tease Bart, but this, it's actually kind of mean in this context. <laughs> All right, and we get Ferris back. Um, and at the end of the scene that we're in right now, there's a, a, a very small one-line throwaway piece of dialogue, right? Where uh, we... Join back with Boko, we run off the screen, and Kara just stops to say once, oh, I got a splinter in my finger. Like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> fighting down there in that hole, got a splinter in my finger. But we just uh, put a little pin in that for later. <laughs> also, this is another good banger right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the weird groan in it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So now you see um, Team Choco walking through that no encounter zone as well. And uh, Team Mog just getting Kara into the party. Something interesting I also learned, you see he just uh, walked across a bridge. That bridge actually doesn't show up if you don't go get Kara. Like the game will not, Wow. the game is like, the game like prevents you from continuing unless you like get Kara. Cause I did that by mistake when I was learning the route for this commentary where I forgot <laughs> to get her and you just can't progress. So the game doesn't let you like mess yourself up basically. Yeah. There's also a, a very, very small time save um, that I actually didn't know for a little while I was doing wrong myself. Uh, when we enter this cave, um, if you don't get off of Boko before you enter it, there's just a mm -hmm. very small, like, two or three lines of dialogue where they wave by to Boko, and you actually see that happen. And so by getting off him one step before the cave, we actually skip that. It's the small things. It, it's all the small things. Oh, God. Who cares? <laughs> I don't know the next line. I <laughs> don't, I, yeah. <laughs> I was oh, going to say work sucks. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're officially a boomer if you know the lyrics to that song. <laughs> you're, an honorary, them, you're, so. an, you're an honorary <laughs> boomer now. Oh, oh, man, okay, yeah. If I'm an honorary <laughs> boomer, it's cool. I'm cool with that. <laughs> So, uh, remember that splinter that Curtis was talking about? Uh, yeah, so uh, that splinter was X-Death. Uh, no. Take it away. That, that rascal. Yeah. Reasons. <laughs> yeah. Plot. Reasons. <laughs> well, I guess there are kind of some reasons, I, I guess, in some ways. But, like, uh, I don't... don't you just, dude, don't you just hate it when you're climbing out of a cave and you get X-Death stuck in your finger? <laughs> you know, every it happens time. every now and then. I hate yeah. it. It's so yeah, annoying. It's just, it's a real, like, it's a real inconvenience I, on your day. He comes up I, and he sends my house into the void, and I'm like, where am I supposed to go now? <laughs> I actually have a question about that. At this point in the game, have we been clued into Xdeath's true nature as to what he is? I can't remember, uh, because usually I'm just smashing through the dialogue. I'm not sure. I do know that, uh, so right here is the point where it, it's kind of weird. This is sort of one of the the strange uh, design choices of FF5 where you're kind of learning all in this general area uh, of the game right before you get to the pyramid that um, so you learn that you know the two worlds have been merged um, you know now we're in the dubbed world three um, and that uh, the world was split in two to seal the power of the void that's another sort of uh, you know, bookmark thing that we're going to see pretty soon um, and then we, we learn that we're supposed to obtain uh, the 12 seal weapons so we can go through the <laughs> right. interdimensional rift and defeat yes, X-Death. the 12 but, sealed weapons. Yeah, that's, so there's those 12 seal weapons. We're just not going to do that and just go to the final dungeon, pretty much. It, it's, it's a very odd. <laughs> the game sort of like hypes it up. as like, oh, this is like the, the lead up to the final dungeon. But mm, I'm, you can just not do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was uh, looking in chat, and uh, chat has actually said that yes, they do reveal it in the tree in uh, the Forest of Moor that X Death's true nature is of a tree. He is a tree. Yes. Um, <laughs> which I think that like he, w I, I think they explained that he wasn't always a tree. It, they they sealed him, and a tree grew on him, or where he was, and his like all the evil spirits of the world kind of coalesced into this tree um, and became X Death. But uh, but yeah, so a splinter, right? Oh, it's a tree. It's made of wood. Oh, a splinter's made of trees. I said, a splinter is made of trees. Um, a splinter <laughs> is made of trees. I mean, you're, factually, you are relatively incorrect. If those words could be used in the same sentence together, either way, I'm using them. The best kind of incorrect. <laughs> so, so um, on, pretty much on both oh, Choco and Tom... Uh, we're probably not going in the same direction. I was going to say, both Choco and Tom Barry are doing some... Uh, uh, story stuff here, but uh, Team Mog is now in uh, X Death Castle off Step Count, so we yep. he's not he's not on Step Count, so he doesn't know when he's getting. Uh, oh, that's very nice. So yeah, I was gonna say that he has a lot yeah. of uh, options at his disposal. So you know that only has uh, 
that only has one magic dragon in, but he can just use a guilt toss to get rid of the other enemies. So, so now he's going to be able to get level two old here. He's going to be able to get his first of two uh, magic dragons, and uh, yeah, he really he didn't have to do any extra searching for this. So he'll only need one more magic dragon uh, after this, and he's at the beginning of the room. So he pretty much potentially is not inconvenienced whatsoever in terms of finding the encounters he needs, despite being right. off step count. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. Great minds. Great minds think alike. Indeed. I wasn't thinking that, so. Well, you know. That says about me. Uh, <laughs> well, you'll open your third eye soon enough. You'll get woke. Would you say that my third eye's blind? Oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, gargoyles. <laughs> gargoyles. <laughs> and the second magic dragon on a team mog. Too easy. Also, uh, shout outs to Kara as a mediator sprite, by the way. Yeah. I like how it's just a sheep. Oh, yeah, with the afro? Yeah. A sheep with a yeah. perm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sheep with a perm horn afro, yeah. Oh, that's Gargoyles, by the way. Yep. Um, My, if if you kill work. one, they'll, like, summon another one, basically. So you kind of want to kill them at the same time. So we are coming up into the pyramid now. And uh, like I was saying, so we are we do still have Step Route with uh, two of the teams. This is very potentially dangerous for Step Route. Although there are some places in it, because of those event tiles we were talking about earlier, that you can recover if something dragon. goes wrong. Yeah, this room in particular is probably the yes. main reason why it's interesting. You see two snakes uh, popped out of the wall when he walked in that room. Uh, every time you get an encounter with one of these snakes, it increments the step count by plus one. Um, so you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, you can get anywhere between, it is possible to get zero, from zero to two encounters. Uh, so you kind of have to adjust based on what happens there. Normally, it's sort of assumed that you'll get one and then you can adjust, you know, if you get zero or two. And Rupon gets one, so that's most likely sort of the standard for his step route. So interestingly, these uh, these poison spikes pop up from the bottom of that room. And instead of waiting for a good time to walk over them, we actually walked clean. right on top of them and took the poison. Super clean machine head dodges there. Those Excellent. machine head enemies, if you run into them, they're nasty fights. We do have the tools to kill them with Thundaga and Reflect or, Thund or uh, Thundaga Sword. Uh, Someone did uh, much clarify in chat, by the way. Buying Thundaga does give you access to Thundaga Sword. Okay, yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought. I wasn't entirely sure, though. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we walk on those spikes to get the poison damage instead of the guard tanking set up with Ferris as our knight. It's a very reminiscent just of uh, Galera. Um, the one nice thing about the machine head room, though, is that the room itself does not actually advance the step counter, so you are free to dodge them in any way you see fit. You don't have to worry about your steps in that room, thankfully. Yeah. And you probably will see all three teams do kind of the same strategy mm -hmm. where we run to the right to try to bait them into that corner for a moment and then try to juke them around to the left. Yeah, it's uh, it's honestly the setup is pretty um, it's pretty specific, but not that difficult. It's just that, you know, if you do mess it up, that it's super, super costly. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. In a glitch, glitchless route like this, if you don't sort of buy the additional things you need, like I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think you need Thundaga for anything other than this. So you know, if you didn't elect to buy it outright, you know, just for the potential of getting it, you just don't have a way to beat the encounter, yeah. and you can't run from them, and you can't run exactly. Yep. So the uh, the room it seems hard or like that, so. I was gonna say the um, uh, the room that Team Tomberry was just in uh, is full of event tiles that you can just walk over. So in the instance, in the case that you did not, you were not on step route, you could recover right there. Oh, ooh, he's. A oh no. Oh, did he mean it? Oh, he's supposed. To, yeah, he's supposed to. Okay, I was oh. curious. I was like, oh, interesting. I was gonna say he. Uh, I know that the other route, there's a little detour in the bottom. Or the top right of that shifting sand room, or whatever you want to refer to it as, and you can go down and get a 12,000 guild chest. It seems like he elected to fall down elsewhere and get something. I did actually wasn't paying attention to see what he got there. 
Um, he, he picked up an ether after he fell down. He picked up the ribbon and the guard ring and the other chest. Okay. He actually... Uh, oh, it was an elixir, yeah. So he actually bought elixir, additional yeah. ethers uh, in another shop. So he, he seems to have a lot... His route has a lot of uh, sort of built-in uh, precautions for missing uh, Darkshock, for example. So pretty nice. And here we're also introduced to a Bahamut... Uh, who t t tempts us and tests us to come fight him and uh, and some other bosses along the way, which we just do not do. Yeah, we're not going to fight extra bosses, not going to get any of the required 12 weapons. <laughs> also, a very minor point. Um, we didn't talk about it. Uh, a team Choco just passed it, but we pass a tree on the way here to the pyramid. Uh, it's like a one screen area. It's I think it's um, in World 2 where we meet uh, the Moogle at. Uh, now that the world is merged, we see it here as well. It's very, very minor, but we do take one step down in that screen just to avoid a tile that would give us a cutscene otherwise. So they wrote in this entire cutscene for us to like reflect on Galoof now that he's no longer with us and everything. But we can just skip it by moving one tile like down and just not do it. And yeah, this game just lets you not do things a lot <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason. You can do as much or as little as you want, basically. Yeah, especially once you get to... Pretty much once you uh, exit the pyramid and then you'll fight this uh, last boss that you're going to see uh, Rupon do right now. Uh, after that point, you can pretty much do whatever you want before headed to the final dungeon. Um, yeah. As little or as much. Uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> in our case, it's going to be as little. Um, but yeah, the game sort of gives you that freedom to do to do what you want. Also, Team uh, Team Mog made it out of World 2, doing all right. Yep, all three runners in World 3, and uh, Team Choco is at the uh, the Aspis room, so we'll see how many he gets. He did get the first one. We'll see if he elects to try to skip the second one or not. Uh, they can only encounter you... Like, if you're turned to the side like this, you'll see the, the snake is on an adjacent tile. Uh, you don't get the encounter, so... Yep, he yeah. uh, just waits a little bit and uh, skips it, no problem. Now for uh, Team Tomberry, we're coming up on Merujin, and this is why we caught those magic dragons. Um, you'll see in this fight, they're kind of broken. We're going to take a potentially very dangerous boss and uh, turn it into a bit of a joke. Uh, a little bit a little bit of trouble juking the machine heads on uh, Team Choco. Oh, uh, yeah. Choco actually Ooh. got the phantom machine oh. head. Yes! Oh my oh. goodness. Oh no. Got stuck. Uh, he does, it does look like he's fine. He's got a Mystic Knight in his party, so, uh, yeah, he does have a backup. Alright, so, Lamia's Kiss, this basically is, is for confusion. It's gonna confuse him to, uh, attack himself, but unfortunately, when he attacks himself, he becomes out of confusion. So I think he's gonna have to combine it again, and you're gonna see him cast the uh, Lamia's Kiss again. Uh, he's casting Thundaga Sword with Bartz, who is the Mystic Knight, and he'll do a lot of damage. I think it takes... Oh, it's only one attack, Ooh, so... Yeah, yep, really wow. nice backup strat. Really nice. There are still, unfortunately, a bunch of them, so he's probably just going to have to try uh, the setup again. The setup is uh, sort of set up from... Uh, there uh, we from go. The other room. Nice, very nice. Not bad at all. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, it's... it's it's uh, the, the setup is pretty good for dodging them, but it doesn't always work. I mean, yeah, I probably get hit with them almost half the time. It's very difficult. Uh, so this, is in this is interesting. Uh, so yeah. Rupon actually only caught uh, one magic dragon. So his strat is going to be a little bit different here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't seen this before. Uh, I guess this is old. this is why he got shock. this is dark why he shock, got yeah. the uh, the extra ethers and stuff. So he's doing dark shock into level two old into level five death. Very interesting. I actually I didn't notice this when I was going through his route. Yeah, I, I didn't know this is a, a well, I guess like it's a, it's always a viable way, but I uh, was unaware that this was one where we would be doing this. Oh, wow. Yeah, very cool. He actually still has a magic dragon, Ooh. I think. Oh, he missed, though. See if he has to reset here. 
or if he gets to I try don't, again. I don't believe he actually has access to time me. Oh, no, he does. He does have access he to does, time yeah. Oh, but Bard he's still good. Literally oh, there we go. Very, cool. very nicely done. Mythic Dawn has eyes, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Could be that the uh, age hadn't uh, taken effect enough yet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and something that I think Curtis was alluding to earlier um, is that you saw uh, on Team Choco's stream, uh, they're in the, the sort of sandfall room. And these sandfalls are actually all event tiles. Um, so if you did uh, get some extra steps in your step counter due to the snakes, um, you can use these sandfalls to eat up steps and go from even steps to odd steps or vice versa. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's not something we talked about, but uh, it's obvious really when you think about it. There's really no way without event tiles to increment the step count by odd amounts because... You know, when you think about taking an extra step in a two-dimensional game, you're always going to be, you know, going one step one way, and then you have to go back. So by default, it's always going to be in increments of two. Um, right. But the reason why event tiles are so useful is because, you know, in one of those movements, it's not incrementing the step count. So in, even though you're moving two tiles, it's only going plus one. So uh, these are really the only points where you can do that, uh, at least off of uh, world map. Yeah, absolutely. Which is sort of its own sort of own thing. Not really the same <laughs> at all, but you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also, in the yeah, 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 Chocos, those are ramps. Uh, if you hit those ramps, nice step count. It's <laughs> yeah, that's right. You just so yeah. dodge them eloquently. I think How the game... That sound effect, it, you know? I, th I think we also didn't mention that the reason why we're going to uh, this pyramid is to get one of the, uh, the tablets. And so after you beat... Uh, Mel I, I, I know it's different in every time. I call her Melisine. I what, what did you call Meru? Meru Jean. Jean. Yeah, yeah, there's so many, there's so many translations of this game. <laughs> uh, I, but anyway, I, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Uh, after you fight her, you're supposed to. So you got one of the tablets. You're supposed to go around, get the twelve weapons, get the three tablets, fight Bahamut, all this stuff. But instead, we're just gonna not do any of it and go to the final dungeon. Uh, Right, pretty much right now on Tom Berry, uh, Tom Berry stream, and uh, pretty much right afterward as well on Choco's. Right. Yeah, the, the pyramid is the only tablet that you have to get. All the other ones are technically optional. I believe we will be taking a detour to Mirage. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. right before we go into the void, just to pick up some uh, uh, some goodies. In particular, we'll be picking up uh, running shoes here very mm -hmm. soon, which yeah. teach auto haste. Yeah, the, the little detour into Mirage is kind of like an invaluable uh, pit stop before going to uh, the final dungeon. Uh, primarily, uh, primarily, like what Mythic was saying, is we need to get some running shoes. Um, it's probably obvious, but you know we're not we haven't been fighting encounters really along the way, so we're not we're certainly not uh, at the level the game would normally expect us to be. So uh, having our turns come up as soon as possible is really nice for us um, in addition to just saving time in general. It's wild um, that the most expensive item that we'll buy in this game is a pair of New Balance. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, I like to think they're, you know, Air Jordans or Yeezys, but <laughs> New Balance is, you know... You don't run in Yeezys. Those are too expensive. No, you, you only keep take those pictures under a glass them. case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you take pictures in them and then you uh, put them in your closet. You That's right. Also, I, I do like a, the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say I, I have a, I have a pair of outlet Nikes that I bought ten years ago that I still wear. Yeah, my my shoes are Asics <laughs> that I bought like about six years ago. <laughs> yeah. I should get some new shoes. <laughs> Not I, very balling. For for the sanity of this relay, I will not discuss the shoes that I own. But if you find me on Twitter, I will talk at length about shoes because I love some <laughs> shoes. But. <laughs> But what I really like is that uh, we just saw it on Team Tonberry, and we'll see it here in a moment on Team Choco. Uh, after we um, exit the forest and we get back to our ship, so our ship has basically uh, floated to us, luckily, and we're able to get back in and have an airship again. Um, but X-Death uses the power of the Void now that the eight crystals, the four in World 1 and in World 2, are destroyed to destroy several towns in the world, including uh, Bart's hometown. Um, and, and when he does, Bart kind of goes on a little rampage. 
uh, flies the ship around the world multiple times, which like is quite an aviation feat, I will say. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's a very long time. Like when I'm doing the uh, like when you're doing the speed run and you like see how many times he like circumnavigates the entire planet. It's very <laughs> impressive. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of them. Think about the the power of the ship. Like what what is it powered on? Hope and plot Friendship. armor. Friendship. Oh dang. Oh yo, we have so much of that around here. So Rupon just got done with the Mirage uh, portion. There is like a number of things that you have to get. I, I kind of forgot. We're also picking up some needed magic, like uh, the size and float spells. Um, and he also picked up uh, a crystal shield along with two pairs of running shoes. You'd ideally like to buy three, um, but you just don't have the money in Glitchless Route. So you're going to see, uh, I'm pretty sure all three runners pick up a pair of running shoes uh, before the next boss. Um, mm -hmm. So in the next forest area, there's a chest you can get for the third pair. Yeah, and there's and also actually, a pair in the excess in the uh, yes. excess castle. That's Team, right. Yeah. Yep. Team Chogo just got done with uh, Marajin uh, in the strategy that we kind of knew and expected, releasing the two magic dragons and then a single cast of fire. Actually, that's backward. A single cast of fire and then two magic dragons, um, yeah. which both do quad nine damage, making short work of that boss. Yeah, Marajin has twenty thousand health, so. Just the two magic dragons will leave her with two health or so, so you need the extra fire. So we're also now in the void on uh, Team Tonberry. Uh, this is the final dungeon in the game. It's also by far the longest dungeon, so it you could really say it's comprised of several dungeons. But... Um, there at the intro, we're introduced to the uh, the fiends that inhabit uh, this world. And much like uh, a lot of the rest of the game, we'll fight some of them and uh, do some of the void. <laughs> some of the void. Some of the void. That's a really good, like, metal album title. Oof. But it would be like some, like, like some of all fears, you know what I mean? Like, math? <laughs> it all comes back to math, I guess. Well, it'd have to be an EP, because it, it would, would be, it would be, be just some of the album. Extra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. It has to be like a five-song EP, <laughs> and it has to only have like, like thirty copies produced. So uh, you'll see, production. you'll see there on Team Tomberry's screen. Uh, he just gave a wide berth to a um, a pot that was sitting in one of these rooms, and that is a full heal pot. If you uh, interact with it, it heals all of your HP. It heals all of your MP. Um, now he is using a different. Uh, route than I'm used to so I'm not exactly sure how he intends to do everything but you see his HP here is 3, 2, 1, and 1 if you touch that it heals you completely and makes strategies that you may want to use very difficult and the reason I say that is because I have definitely just <laughs> out of habit interacted with that and been like oh no <laughs> you're kind of so. screwed if you do that honestly because yeah. you, need, you need to uh, you really need to be uh you really do. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you can't, can't really take hits from any of the enemies here. Yeah, you kind of you can, can pull really. it off. The way, the only way you can really pull it off, because I because I didn't want to reset when I did it when I made that mistake. So I just let somebody die and use the life spell, which will revive you in critical instead of Phoenix Downs, which brings you above critical. That is very smart. <laughs> yeah, because I was very very dumb. Yeah, you know you could just take you know <laughs> you take the good, take the bad. Actually, I think I was uh, mistaken. By the way, the the the, uh, the chest in this area is actually a ribbon, not uh, running shoes. Yeah, the chest the, in this the area. Run, the run, yeah. yeah, the running shoes is in the castle. Ooh, let's mm -hmm. see how many times Bards actually goes around the world here. Y'all pay attention to the good stuff. I'll just count. So this boss is actually so uh, some routes will elect to skip going to more entirely. This is one of the fights where having gone there, it's actually useful. Um, more is one of the only places, well, it, at least in terms of the speedrun, it is the only place you can get Reflect. Um, and she herself can use Reflect, and the, the reason why that's problematic is we need to cast level 2 old on her. So, there's really no, there's no way to have someone, like, 
just, we need to, because of the spells we need to cast, there's no way to make it work. So uh, if you do reflect, it actually uh, makes this fight a lot easier. Otherwise, your only sort of option is actually to uh, keep resetting over and over again with a time mage. Yeah, so basically. I believe we'll see uh, Team Tonberry take a save here um, after jumping last down this. last save. Yep. Which you do want to the developers. Screw yeah. the developers, man. <laughs> uh, that little guy right there, he's Ooh. not very nice. No. <laughs> you run into him and it's uh, you reset. Yeah. Oh, you remember we put a pin in uh, much, much earlier fighting Biblos. Uh, he said, my master still lives. So there could be some uh, other yes. book monster somewhere. His master is really it. cute, okay? They're really <laughs> cute. Ah, that's your aesthetic, is it? Ooh. That's pretty ay ay right there. That is very ay ay Look. The, the, the big horns, you know, the, the claws, the book... I'm a man of myself. Well read. Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, Team Mog did get an encounter with Machine Head here. But again, he's got the strat ready, so should be no problem. Easy peasy. Meanwhile, on Rupon stream, uh, he's doing a number of things. This is basically uh, how a lot of the fights are going to go. Um, so the general idea is that we're going to be buffing up uh, one or more in the case of the final fight in particular um, characters to with the Samson power. Uh, like we said earlier, it buffs your level by 10 and that makes Giltas do more damage. Um, this is kind of, again, one of the reasons why uh, the glitch category is faster because you can dupe Dragon Fangs, which gives you access to the Dragon Power version, which is twice as fast at buffing. Um, the only other really important thing is he used some of the chemist drinks to give himself more speed and more uh, damage. And also he casted Berserk on a panda, which forces him to use physical attacks. And, you know, we've used this strap before. The Knight's cover ability is really, really nice, which is also why we see everyone at very low HP. So uh, step count is useful for many, many things in uh, this run. Um, in some of the routes, depending on what kind of count you're going to do, the room that Team Tomberry is in right now is very useful because it is long. There are a lot yeah. of encounters you can get in it. So some of the routes are made so that you get fewer, which still ends up being several. Yeah, I, I think like you can almost, I think you get one in any percent, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's one it's or two. two. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. He's already up to, like, four. It's a very, very cool room, though. I love the aesthetic of it. Yeah. Especially if you don't have the Passages ability, because you're like... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, true. I, 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 <laughs> what do I do? And then, and then now you're seeing here uh, this detour. This is a glitchless thing, grabbing the running shoes um, from this side room. Um, and any percent, you would just buy three of them, because you'd have a bunch of Dragon Fangs to sell. Don't have that luxury here, so we will pick those up and we'll go on to our next fiend fight down here as well now this fiend is my personal aesthetic actually <laughs> i'm a big fan of this guy so you, you like the you like the 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 whole one eye thing huh uh sure yeah let's go with that <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. um, this is why we have float by the way <laughs> yeah. um He's gonna if if a party member has float on them, he's always gonna cast G Force Hundred, uh, which is going to remove float, and then uh, I believe he tries to follow up with Quake afterwards. Yeah, he uses uh, Earth. Basically, if you let him get a turn while no one is floating, you will game over. Yeah, uh, because not game. only is yeah not only do we have no HP, it's also AOE. So. Um, mm -hmm. pretty much the safest way to do this fight is to just, uh, continually cast Levitate on someone over and over again. Um, and yeah, he, he'll never, he'll never kill you because the only thing that his AI is programmed to do is like, well, I need to use Earthquake, so I can't <laughs> use Earthquake if you're floating, so I have to bring you down to the ground. So, yeah, it's a very safe fight for that reason, as long as you just keep casting Float. Team Mog is out of the pyramid. 
very close behind. My personal favorite is uh, Holly Carnasso because you know frog. Yeah, Holly ah, yes. is, I was gonna say that's that's the best one. <laughs> In any percent, we get to keep at least one party member frogged for the rest that's of the right. round. Yeah, it's great. Yep. That actually is a uh, a nice sort of unintended benefit. I feel like chat beat me to it. I was getting ready to say that my, the only thing I love in life is <laughs> <laughs> But first, we're going to get a little smooch. Well, we're going to menu, and then we're going to get a little smooch. A little smooch. I like how they're all multicolored frogs. I know, that's the best yeah, part. It's so great. I love how they oh. hop when they run, and the <laughs> animation when they use <laughs> Samson power, or dragon power. Yeah, hey, hey, they like flex. There it is. <laughs> 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 also, look at that stance. Just that, oh, that's... That is a confident yeah. stance. That's confident. That I love that. There's nothing more attractive than confidence. And like a wild purple and yellow cape. You have those two things? Oh my goodness. And you transform people into frogs? Like. <laughs> Pretty also, if, right um, now. Later, dudes. If anybody did miss the um, Mira Jean fight, uh, they will be able to see it one more time here shortly on uh, Team Mog's screen, just in case they didn't see releasing the dragons. Oh, and Rupon making pretty quick work of uh, Halicarnassus. Kind of something interesting about his route that, uh, as far as I'm aware, Choco and Mog don't do is that he's actually adding some additional damage with Lena with uh, Thundaga, so that's kind of cool to see. Sort of uh, supplementing those guild tosses. This next fight he's going to is for sure my favorite fight of the whole speedrun. <laughs> it's super yeah. cool. This oh, is yeah. definitely the coolest fight in the entire speedrun. It's kind of weird, too. Uh how it works um so the first thing you're gonna see is he's gonna use hide with the uh with the bard and everyone else is gonna die and now we're he's gonna, gonna wait yep so that's one that's two that's three and then well it's four excuse me if you count the first one yeah now that kara is back uh, we're going to use a, com uh, a combine to full restore and uh, revive Ferris. And because we know that Wind Slash is coming and we need to be able to tank it, otherwise everyone dies. And then now, for some reason, uh, yeah. Pratani will like phase here and just be susceptible to level 5 death. It's really weird and you can't see it visually on her model, but if you're watching the ATBs, yes. uh, there's like a little freeze. And that freeze indicates, oh, hey, you can use level 5 death on me. And then, yeah, otherwise, we just sort of trivialized a fight that otherwise would be really difficult, actually. Now, there yeah. is a, a very interesting thing in that fight, too, that I have absolutely done before, accidentally. Um, if you use the uh, level 5 death or a death potion in Glitched at the wrong time, it mm. doesn't just not work. It crashes the game. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, you I didn't can, know you that, actually. Weird stuff on that fight. Like, if you hide <laughs> for too long, uh, the game will either... The game will crash. Uh, Twintania like, can also have this glitch where, like, it del deletes items from your inventory. Yeah. Excellent. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> and when Love it crashes, it. it really crashes, too. Like, your your screen goes, like, random pixel colors. It's great. It, it's funny because, like, when it, when it happened to me the first time, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what happened? Uh, the number seven repeatedly appeared, and I was like, oh, lucky sevens. This should have been FF9. Ah, I would have had to. No. <laughs> Not so lucky seven. Not so lucky sevens. But we're in the very last area of the game. This is the end of the void. Yep, Rupon is in the final stretch. It's sort of, uh, yeah, I just got to go through a few rooms, and he's going to make his way uh, to the final boss. And... Because, like we said, uh, 
I don't know. They're just the game designers are hardcore. Uh, we still have <laughs> no access to saves, and we still right. will not be able to save any times at all. The only save I believe before the final oh, yeah. boss is there you have is... to beat you have to yep. beat another boss. Like you have to the beat an optional boss. boss. Yeah. yeah, to unlock a save because yeah, you know, we really do it like that. Yeah. So there really is no room for error uh, after. Uh, pretty much from Califasteri onward, that's the only save we've got. So, Rupon making his way to the actual penultimate fight of the entire game with X Death or X Tree, as he's affectionately called for phase <laughs> one. And luckily for y'all, if you've seen, uh, if you saw this in past relays, uh, you did not get to see uh, the second phase of this fight. But uh, because this is glitchless, uh, we were not going to be using the really famous uh, Kiss of Blessing glitch, which, uh, to those of you who don't know, uh, inflicts Berserk on uh, on the final boss. And for whatever reason, it's just he can't go to Phase 2, so he just permanently remains in Phase 1. And when you defeat Phase 1, the game just ends. Uh, we will yeah, not be doing that. it basically overwrites their AI script. Yeah. It's very unintended. Yeah, it's very odd. It's sort of one of those very well-known glitches. Yeah. Um, but fortunately for us, we actually do get to see uh, phase two and phase two is infinitely more involved than phase one in terms of uh, <laughs> strategy. So that's very cool. It's low-key terrifying. Yes. <laughs> it yeah, actually there's you know, a lot it is, going on. It is very terrifying. There are I think four targets on Neo yep. X Death, and yep. uh, and they all have different um, AI. They all have different attributes about them. Different skills work on different pieces of them. And so you're like really managing a lot at the end which I, I think is very cool for a final fantasy speed run or any speed run to like you get to the end and then you really have to show off at the end also yep. the music for the oh, fight so Ooh. good s tier i like to like i, I get the feeling that like the design for uh, Neo X Death is very much like Zerumus ish, but like with a lot more crazy stuff going on. Like, because we, oh, yeah. we are kind of like flying through space, but like <laughs> everything is shaking and everything's like changing colors. Mm. The laws of physics are breaking down. Yeah. yeah, I guess we, I guess we could do one final uh, story uh, recap. I guess sort of what's going on right now is. You know, we've reached X death and then we, we talked about already, but he reveals his true form. A tree, but uh, not just a tree, but specifically the more tree, um, because the force of more had been used in the past to seal away evil spirits. And that's sort of the background of X death. So X death here is trying to s destroy us uh, by sealing us away in the void. But the spirits of the uh, <laughs> No, no, no longer Dawn. with us. Warriors oh, yeah. of Dawn. They <laughs> save us. So. <laughs> yeah. But they, in their final act, they prevent us from being uh, sealed away here, including Galuf, and are affording us the opportunity to fight X Death head on, which is exactly what Rupon's going to be doing after he does a little bit of menuing here. And uh, he's a pro. I'm sure he's going to nail it. Oh, one more coup do 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 at the bottom. Make sure all the, the in particular the speed stats, really important here. So we have to do a number of things. Uh, the main thing is you're going to see him buff up uh, two characters. Uh, I'm not sure which two, but it looks like one of them is Bart's. Uh, presumably, Bart's the Ferris. other one is going to be Ferris. Yeah. Um, you may have noticed that we have a Mystic Knight as well, and the first skill that he casts there is actually uh, Break Sword. Uh, that's going to be very important for Phase Two, but we'll talk about that when yes. we get there. Um, but other than that, there's not a whole lot going on at the beginning of this fight. Um, it's really important to sufficiently buff up your characters before you start chucking money at him because uh, right. as this phase gets lower in HP, uh, he starts doing some really nasty things. Right now, all he's really doing is, uh, you know, trying and failing to do single target attacks on us. Uh, yeah, if I, Knight makes that useless. I, 
I believe there's only two or three moves that he can do, and there's a percent chance of him doing them each time at the beginning. So like yeah. it's 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 not scripted in the way that it's the same every time, but you can know his full range of movement pretty easily. Yeah. So he got Dark Shock to to land. Nice. A little Ooh. too old. A little too old to land. Just gonna wait for the right moment. You'll see at the top of the uh, screen, there's can't run messages coming up. He's using that to time uh, level two old, level five death combo. Um, it's sort of the easiest, most consistent way to do it. So he's probably, he's got a number in his head and he's counting the number of messages and then he's gonna cast level five death. First try, nice. Not bad at all. The so timing now, is really hard. Yep. Here we go. So normally, if you've seen this in the past, you would have seen this would be the end of the game. However, this is glitchless, and we get to see Neo X Death, who is particularly uh, a scary kind of guy. So there's there's a definitely a number of things. Like we've mentioned, there's a bunch of different parts, and we kind of have to deal with them in different ways. Um, Importantly, we have that uh, break sword ready to go yes. as well. Yes, very important. Yeah, we pr we prepped the break because I believe it's the uh, the, the body that we need to attack with break. Uh, I forget exactly, but we'll, I'm pretty sure it's the body. So we're going to be doing an attack with Lena, and that's going to instantly kill one of them. The other parts uh, we're going to be using level two old uh, with Kara, presumably into level five death. That's going to kill all the other parts. And then after that, we're going to uh, be using our tried and true guild toss strategy to kill the head. And yes, this is also a banger to end out the game. Yes. All right, and that should take care of uh, the breakable one. Yep. Yep, nice. You can hear the, the death sound there. Yep, zero is what you want to see there. It's going to cast level two old. The nice thing about uh, this particular math setup, uh, he might have to do something different here, actually. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'd also say it's probably a good time for um, the next Tonberry runner to get ready. Yep, this is going to be coming up pretty soon here. They're going to start... Uh, it's going to start uh, tossing Gil here shortly, and uh, it's six tosses till time. And time happens when you hear the explosion from the uh, the dying animation. Uh, petrify Lena petrifies herself there just to get her turn out of the way. So that's two. That's three. Two more to go. Nice cooperating. One more, and time is coming up here for the next Tomberry runner. And that's time. That's it. Congratulations, Congratulations, Rupan. GG. GG's Rupan. Team Tom Very Barry, nice go. run. Kept step count the whole way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, very impressive. Yep. Excellent run. GG, Rupan. So, meanwhile, we've got uh, Team Choco is in the, I believe, the final cutscene here before... Their final bout with X Death and uh, Mog is not too far behind. Sort of at yeah, the. Mog had uh, to use a reset on Calipastaria, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, it's something that can happen. It's a. Uh, it's definitely not a fight you'd want to go into without having the uh, option to use that. So uh, yeah, absolutely. no problem getting on the second try there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much a sprint to the finish for Mog as well. So he's not that far behind. 
really only looking at about a you know a 10 to 15 minute kind of probably about 15 minutes sort of thing yeah i mean all things considered with like the the craziness that ff5 can bring these three teams mm-hmm. still finished really close considering yep definitely yeah. and uh dark like boko really dealt with a lot of uh you know, uh, some AP problems and losing step early and has played it exceptionally well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Losing really? step in this game, especially early, is it's so hard to play through. So yeah. just big props to Boko for... They've, they've really shown off their through. knowledge of the game, too. Like, knowing, like, how to handle each of these situations that they've had to deal with throughout most of this run. Like, they've done exceptionally well. Absolutely. Absolutely. No Omega oh, fights today. No, no Omega <laughs> fights. <laughs> yeah, they were kind enough to give us a save point right before uh, the Omega fight, but not right before the final boss. <laughs> All right, Axe Odin coming into the final boss here. He's been afforded the opportunity to fight X death from the Warriors of Dawn. He's just got to do a little bit of menuing here, and then he's going to uh, take his stab at the tree. Yeah, the, the strategies that we use here should be the same, even though the routes are a, a bit different compared to to what Rupan was doing. Because um, in Glitchless, you don't really have a whole lot of ways of you know, a whole lot of variety afforded. We do actually have some dragon power left over, though. We have a couple dragon fangs. One dragon fang. Uh, the party order is a bit different, but it's going to look relatively the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same strat. I think the only, I think the only difference I was surprised by is the uh, the the way in which Rupon was doing the level two or level five death. It's a little bit different yeah. from how I'm used to it, but uh, it works all the same. Mm -hmm. I think one what you're going to see. Miss. I think the main thing you're going to see as setup for phase two uh, for Axodon is he's going to make sure that um, his party, but Ferris in particular, has full ATB going into phase two because he wants to cast uh, level two old immediately when phase two starts, and that's sort of part of the timing method. Rupon did something a little bit different involving the flea buffer, um, which works totally fine too, but uh, it's just a minor difference. Is that a white hole miss? Hmm. Level I two believe because we had the the dragon power, uh, we get to spend a little bit less time setting up than uh, uh, than Rupan did. Unless we're gonna oh, wait, we haven't bought the second second character, have we? Uh, let's see. Now just timing that level five death. Yeah, he's trying to make sure. The, really awkward. Yeah, he's trying to make sure the ticks are exactly. So you saw the second that Kara got uh, maxed ATB, he uh, he used level five death. Yeah. And also, like I mentioned, he's queued it up such that not only does Ferris have full ATB, it's her, her turn next. So Ferris is set, and he's going to do level two old immediately when the fight starts. And I think uh, I was going to say before one way to do this strat is that. If you cast level two old immediately when phase two starts, um, the the combo actually kind of times itself. If you queue level five death as oh. he's doing his animation, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so it's really it's a really nice way to do it. So you don't have to think about uh, think about timing it or doing any buffers. This is working on speed one as well. It does work. Yes, it does. Uh, Ooh, I was think just thinking about it in in hindsight. I wonder if. Uh, I wonder if Rupon's strat gets the... Like, I wonder if this strat, he goes past an increment of five once or twice, and Rupon's strat gets him on the... If the, You know what I mean? Because yeah, it seems right, like Rupon right. did that it. Would, that Rupon, would make the most sense, yeah. Rupon did level, two, level five Doom uh, almost immediately after level two old, and this one waits an entire turn. So kind of an, kind of an interesting thing to think about. I might have to get the abac abacus out to verify that one, but uh, that's what I'm thinking for now. It's a little bit more math for the road. Yep. That's right. This is going to be right. pretty much the same, except, yep, cast level two old. Uh, you're going to see uh, Kara do the same uh, break sword. Zero is what we want to see. 
And then you'll notice he's going to queue during the animation, and it's going to automatically time itself. It actually works on uh, Battle Speed Active as well, because uh, during animations, it, uh, it it's like the it still pauses like that, so it still automatically yeah. times itself. Which yeah, is that's nice. super cool. Yep, nice little mini detail. Other than that, now we're just going to uh, uh, use some guilt toss. I guess a little additional uh, buffing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to make up for the fact that we're not using two guilt tossers, only using one. Yep. Compared to Rupan. No, I think we only do one additional Samson power, but it's totally fine because uh, you know we would just be defending with oh. Ferris otherwise. Oh, that's uh, not good. Our tank setup should still be okay. I think we might still be good. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, Lena. Um, something right. I didn't okay. mention, was mentioned in good the chat deal, earlier. Good deal. The reason why the knight is minied is for whatever reason this game, mini doubles your block chance. Uh, uh. For reasons. Also, <laughs> by the way, the Choco Runner next. All Get right. ready, because it's coming up. There you go, that's and that's time. Yep. Sorry, I should have given you a better warning than that. Oh, no, it's my fault. No, I, I completely forgot. There. We also got to see there one of my favorite things about the Neo XF fight that we don't see in the glitched run, which is the message the laws of physics are breaking down. Yeah. That's a, that's a very, like, FF8 kind of uh, precursor right there. That's right. Five and eight, the best ones, I'm telling you. Now, there you go. <laughs> GG, Zix. Yep, GG's. So, just Team glad... Mog... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Just glad nothing too terribly went wrong. No, that was a really yeah, nice round. Really well. Played really, really well. Absolutely. And Mog is not far behind. We've got, what, uh, one, two, we've got three bosses left. Not bad at all. Probably about ten minutes away from the end, I would say. We get to see more frogs. And more frogs, exactly. <laughs> But I think uh, I think it's also if the uh, FF1 runners uh, want to uh, sort of introduce themselves and start talking about some stuff, that's totally I was fine just about as to well. Say that. Yep, <laughs> and uh, right. feel please feel free. So welcome everybody to Final Fantasy One for the PSP. It's a little bit unique uh, compared to other versions of Final Fantasy One in the sense that we have a very game-breaking equipment glitch. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail once FF5 is completely wrapped up, but suffice it to say that we're able to turn basic equipment into overpowered endgame equipment, and most of that is going to carry us through the entire run. Um, I wanted to say congratulations again to both uh, Tonberry and Choco FF5 runners. Amazing run. Uh, I was uh, very entertained watching that. Uh, I'll add that a lot of the equipment generated is actually post-game equipment that's exclusive to GBA uh, and future versions of the game, basically Dawn of, the Dawn of Souls dungeons. Yeah, you'll, it's you'll a, it's an glitch. interesting juxtaposition, having glitchless FF5 right next to <laughs> FF1, which is <laughs> arguably the most broken. <laughs> um, like you'll, you'll, so this is, you'll essentially see, so what, yeah, you'll, you'll essentially see the glitch here. We'll explain exactly how it works. Um, it's basically because you can menu. Uh, the 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 menus in this game are very fast, and because of how fast they are and how smooth they are, it allows us to break them. Yeah, uh, the the basics of how it works basically is that you're equipping one piece of equipment onto another character in a different slot, and when you're going from a weapon to an armor or an armor to a weapon, the game doesn't really know what to do, so it tries to load the correct weapon or armor of that same ID on the other character's slot and due to matching IDs basically you can take uh, an item that you wouldn't normally be able to get at this point in the game and put it on. Uh, at, right at the beginning of the game we created Knight's Armor uh, which is a huge defense boost but it also sells for 18,000 gills so that gives us a lot of the money that we need for uh, the majority of the run. As well, that second menu that was done by Team Choco turns the Leather Cap into a Judgment Staff, which, when used as an item, casts Flare, which just absolutely nukes uh, packs of mobs. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that you'll notice, they also did do the 
famous like 15 puzzle. Um, you do it a couple times just to get some of the rewards from it, uh, which are pretty useful for the entire run. Yeah, the main reward that you would be looking for, the first place reward is a Mega Elixir, which can be very handy on the final boss. But uh, basically they're looking for an emergency exit, which is a reward for finishing second place. And it's a one in six chance to drop, and that allows you to instantly warp out of a dungeon that can save you several minutes if uh, if you happen to get it. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely worth doing. Um... Because it's, I mean, you won't necessarily always get it the first time, um, but I believe you save time as long as you can do the puzzle, like, as long as you can do the puzzle consistently. Yeah, I'd, so I'd say if it, the majority of runners would use that emergency exit to leave Earth Cave, and that saves, depending on what your RNG would have been walking out, anywhere between a minute and a half to two minutes, and it takes you ideally 30 seconds to complete the puzzle so you would get a minute of time save if you got it first try basically today i learned you can get encounters on the twintania screen i have definitely gotten encounters there not expecting to be able to get encounters there and uh have been quite terrified but um we, d we didn't mention during uh while the other teams were running it, but the hide command for the bard actually will function as a runaway command on um, unrunnable <laughs> encounters if the bard is the only one alive. <laughs> so if that happens, God forbid, you can just hide. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and you will run away, which is nice. Um, Wish I could do that in real life. Just like hide <laughs> my problems. That's what I do at work. I mean, they oh. haven't caught me yet. <laughs> is, oh, so it works for you. Yeah, it works for me. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mog in the home stretch now. Um, yeah, this area. Fortunately, with auto haste, we're faster than most of the encounters here. We can run from them. Yeah. Yeah, this um, area. I think that chest might be one of them. There's like a number of optional and at least one super boss as well. Um, and one boss, like we said, guarding the final save point. Yeah. Because, you know, why not? Well, I got a one-up FF4's long trek to uh, <laughs> to its final yeah. boss. Yeah, I think that one chest is actually Shinryu. I think it might be as well, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe it, it is. is. It is yeah. Shinryu. Yeah, so that is the um, aforementioned super boss. Yeah. So he's getting ready to go into the final boss now. Um, and I will just say... Everyone should learn the FF5 speedrun. It's fantastic. There's multiple versions of it. Glitched is a lot of fun. Uh, this glitchless run is a lot of fun. I think they're great because they show off a lot of what FF5 has to offer. Like, there's not a lot of sameness through it. You get to do a lot of different things. So, you know, come hang out in the Discord. Uh, everybody, when I was learning the run, was super nice to me and, like, told me stuff constantly. So, like, great community. Come hang out. Um... Good luck to the FF1 runners. Follow all the runners, all the commentary on Twitch. Follow them all on Twitter. That's what I would say. Amen. Uh, Riff's rule. <laughs> Riff's rule. And yeah, I guess... If you run this game, you get Big Bridge. Like That's right. Twice, if you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero times if you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. I think, uh, thinking back on it, um, you know, this year... We had uh, two runners who had never run the game before, uh, both Dart like Boko, who, like we said, put together the route for this, uh, and Axe Odin, who learned it just for this marathon. Uh, Curtis actually kind of did that last year, when you think about it. You had, yeah. just, <laughs> you had pretty much just started uh, yep. learning the game right before, and then you joined on for that marathon. Uh, that was yep. any percent, but, you know, similar situation. So uh, FF5 yep. is always uh, always welcoming to new new runners, and, you know, there's whatever route you're looking to learn, there's probably a nice set of notes uh, available to help you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot a of nice, super knowledgeable people nice in the community of, that love helping people. a nice set of video them. guides for... Oh, yep. yeah. Too. Shout out yeah. to Zinfogel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Zinfogel yeah. has a fantastic video tutorial on the any percent category of this game as well. Um, it... it it covers basically anything you any situation you could ever find yourself yeah. in including yep. like running out of money at the end of the game and not being yeah. able to guild toss it even covers that yeah it's it is extensive it's pretty incredible yeah. yeah step count is certainly daunting and there's you know there's no way about it but you know to learn the game you don't 
you you don't need the step count to beat the game. Like yeah, that much true. has been proven today. Uh, you know, Darklight Bogo's done an amazing job uh, getting through this run, and you know, and it goes to show that especially if you especially if you are prepared, you can absolutely get through any run of the game. This game mm-hmm. has some RNG, but not so much in this kind of way for the most part you know you can get through pretty much any run if you want to yeah i was about to say um the any percent category is actually arguably one of the most consistent final Mm -hmm. fantasy runs out there. yeah yeah um as long as you do everything the way that you're supposed to do it you should get the same result or very similar results pretty much every time so if you if you watch final fantasy runs you think well i'd like to do them but there's too much rng ff5 any percent might be for you it's yep. darn near deterministic. It's it's really yeah. Hard. It, yeah. <laughs> and I was gonna say the the glitchless route, the things that uh, I was thinking that could be more RNG that beyond your control, like running out of Phoenix Downs on uh, the undead boss and stuff like that. That's just simply not gonna be a problem when you have forty five Phoenix Downs in the glitch route. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that that's even right. further mitigates the problem. Yeah. In any case, Team yeah, Mog on the yeah. final boss. We're doing phase one. We got a Samson Power, our uh, our Gill Tosser, and uh, we've I believe he just hit Dark Shock as well. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Showing what happens if you hold the uh, <laughs> the cursor. I don't know if you guys have audio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just, it just... <laughs> so level two old, no problem. Gonna do some defense so he can time. Give break to Kara for phase two. And we're going to be going into phase two, no problem. So I guess the uh, FF1 runner for Team Mog can uh, start getting ready as well. Probably only just a few minutes away here. Perfect torn order as well. Ferris will be next. Nice. Five Doom, no problem. That timing is really that's really hard. So the fact that nobody missed it. Yeah. Is, uh... There's also like that uh, brief moment before the skull appears where you're like, oh god, did it? Yeah, yeah. You like stop breathing for a sec. Yeah. <laughs> what is void? Arg. Yo, everybody likes to summon the void, but people hate it when they get stuck in the void. Everyone always asks where is the void, but no one ever asks how is the void. Ooh, that's a Pepe <laughs> hands right there. That is. <laughs> I also just love the scope of Xdeath's tree. You can see like his tree is like winding all the way into like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dimension over there. Way back in the background, it's cool. Yeah. You know, honestly, ever since you've made the comparison, the, this boss text for Neo X Death is like so reminiscent of the Ultimecia end in FF8. Really yeah, cool. Yeah. It's almost like a precursor. It, really yeah. it really feels similar. I also feel like, uh, like just for the speed runs, FF5 and FF8 both have a a jump in like difficulty for their final yeah. boss. Mm-hmm. Like Ultimecia is mm-hmm. kind of tough, and like Neo X Death has a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we've got the level two old. Yeah. Oh, uh, not old, that's still. Not you can still. It, there it still we should go. be okay. Yep. There we go. Okay, okay. You have more tries. So we hit the break second try. Second try is the new first try. Exactly. The level five doom should time itself, as we said. Perfect. No problem. There's that delay just to like give you that little <laughs> bit of suspense, you know. <laughs> Alright, so Team Mog FF1 Runner, it's almost coming up. We got six skill tosses, that's number one. One Samson Power for the road. Halfway there. Somebody's going to have to get in there and fix the laws of physics. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that for, a, uh, <laughs> for FF1. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. time they travel, can, they, can, they, they can dupe some abacus. Sci- there ab- we go. Ab- abacuses. <laughs> ab- abacai. <laughs> All right, coming up on time here. One more.
time. That is time. Congratulations, GG. 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 Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. Congratulations yep. to all the runners. And now I am excited yeah. for FF1. Yep. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks uh, guys for having me and for having us here on commentary absolutely. to bring you guys FF5. I really do appreciate it. Yep, thank you yeah. so much for watching. Uh, thank you to Darklight, Boko, Axodin, and Rupon for having us. Amazing runs by all three of you. And uh, I think uh, unless there's anything else to be said, uh, if one of the runners wants to say something, we'll give it over to FF1.